pretending, they're pretending like they got a life. You got no fucking life. What pretending, fam? I'm tired of your act. I'm tired of people acting in front of me after six fucking years. Of six fucking years annoying me, they think they can actually convince me that they have a life. And they're doing something Friday night instead of conversing with their f online friends like me or you or Kaiser, all right? Fucking losers. I know you have no life. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. I n I've known you for six years. You have no fucking Friday night life. So join the stream for a bit. It's the weekend. They'd rather be friends with their own fucking misery. That's what, what it is. They're liars, fam. You know you got no life. When you're, when you're just in and out of my stream at fucking 3 a.m. in the morning like you got a life, you ain't got no fucking life. Chat shit to me, fam. At least I'm honest about it. I have literally nothing better to do than what I'm, what I'm doing right now. I literally have nothing better to do. It's, it's past midnight. All my friends are asleep. Their kids are asleep. Their families are asleep. I've got nothing better to do. So stop pretending you have something better to do. Because you fucking know. You have nothing better to do. Busy B. Fake busy B mentality. You got no life. You have no life. So stop pretending you fucking do. You have no life. Oh, I had to do this, I had to do that, I had to do Maybe the Americans or Vected has. It's daylight for Vected. And it's about afternoon time for some people in America. Maybe. But even then, I think none of you fuckers got life. So at least for one fucking, make a fucking effort, you know what I'm saying? What's the point of me reacting to stuff that you asked for this time when you can't even bother to fucking show up? I play a game till more people show up. This is pathetic, man. This is pathetic. Play a game. Let's see what games can I play? Games can I play? <sighs> games can I play? Somebody's been getting pissed off on my YouTube, by the way, Toshi. Somebody's been getting pissed off about my views on the Israel Palestine conflict. It could be one of three people. One of one of a couple of people. It could be William with fake accounts. It could be one of my in real life friends. It could be immortal or somebody, somebody that he shared my videos with. There's one person creating seven or eight fake accounts and spamming my one of my YouTube videos, which is done like almost two thousand views. They be saying, "Look at you whispering, fuck! Why are you whispering down there in the corner?" Because I have to keep my voice down so that I turn up the sensitivity of my mic, right? So even though I'm speaking lightly, like low voice, you can still hear me over the stuff. And they keep saying this shit about, why are you whispering down there? You whispering fuck? You whispering? Why are you whispering in your reactions? I'm not whispering. I'm just keeping my voice low. And they hide their identity. And I can tell they're all fake accounts. They have no avatar. It's like John 167892. Two, it's just fake accounts they've been creating multiple to say the same thing over you whispering degenerate you're nobody they keep bringing up the whispering part I'm like is that an insult to me is that a fucking insult I'm just keeping my voice down because it's late night you know what I'm saying late night you get me and uh, they think that's an insult but it's the same person bringing it over and over and over again Oh shit, Ryan subscribed to tier one. Oh shit, did the, did the notification come up, Ryan? Did the notification come up? So yeah, somebody's making fake accounts, Ryan. And you heard it, did the audio come through, Ryan? Oh, did the audio come through as well, Ryan? Lariat, Larry. Yeah, um, okay. Somebody's making fake accounts, just obsessed with me speaking at a low pitch, like a low voice. So I'm speaking at like almost, not a whisper, but like a hushed voice, and my sensitivity is up, and they can't take it. So not only are they pissed at my views on 
if Piers Morgan versus uh, whoever the guest is. Like my views on Christianity, my views on Judaism, Israel. But they're also pissed that they know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, if you go to my, uh, go to the reaction, the latest Piers Morgan reaction that I did right on my YouTube and look at the comments. They're hidden so you might not see them. Because he's just spamming me so I had to hide them. He's just spamming me. You whispering degenerate. You whispering motherfucker. You're a fraud. You're fake. You're whispering motherfucker. I'm like, what? what is this obsession with the whispering stuff? I'm not whispering. I'm just speaking. I hushed up. It's fucking hilarious. And I know it's the one person making multiple accounts and do it thinking they can get under my skin. But nothing gets under my skin after six, seven years now, so. What can you do with these people, man? Cry more. That's all I say now. Cry more. There we go. Fucking finally, you fuckers rolling. Just under the 20 minute mark, I'll give you that. Do you see the title? Do you see the title vectored? I can't because I hid them now so they won't show up. So they hid them for me. They're probably hidden for you. I can't show you them because I've hid them now. You dislike knowledge, people, obviously. <laughs> Vected, vected. Get over it. This is the time I stream. There should be no excuse for people. Man's coming late. No fucking excuse. Now, I'll be doing one video of this stream, but it's a bit longer than the other ones. It's the final part of the migrant trail video. This time he's going to Mexico now to get to the US border. We're trolling, Moin. It's me, Mario Akbar. <laughs> Mario Akbar. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That's the, that's, it's like a bastardization of Allah Akbar. But I will, just as a joke, entertain you. Mario Akbar. Mario Akbar. <laughs> Jihad. Mario, who, who is this dude with the big mouth in the bottom left? Ironic, he says big mouth because he's creating fake accounts saying I'm whispering. He's whispering. He can't take it. He cannot take it. He cannot take the ASMR. I think my, my ASMR is getting under his skin. That's what it is. Yep, that's the one. This this guy is just one of many fake accounts from the same person. Luigi is the infidel more in here. He's the Shia. He's the Shia. You know, on my late uh, vector on my YouTube, the latest Piers Morgan versus. Douglas Murray and uh, the latest Piers Morgan reaction video it's got like 1,600 views now there's this one guy who cannot take what I'm saying but in, but instead of lashing out and calling like 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 calling out what I'm saying he's just saying who's this whispering motherfucker on the bottom left? who's this big mouth on the bottom left they got nothing to say they malfunction they can't they can't step to you they can't re uh, rebut or do a rebuttal or retort to what you're actually saying they just have ad hominems and shit like that so <laughs> uh, this is uh, actually kaiser's been right getting me to do reactions to controversial subjects has riled people up so even though I'm losing subscribers, I'm actually getting more viewers on some of these videos. The more in my game and bad sounds. Yeah, no, it's b b the thing is, when I upload uh, from the Twitch archive to the YouTube videos, the audio gets compressed. It sounds worse on the YouTube vids. So when you notice that when you upload from Twitch, Twitch quality is better than YouTube quality. When you upload from Twitch to YouTube, not only does the video quality degrade, but the audio quality degrades as well. So. Moin versus Piers Morgan when he gotta he gotta invite me on man. The kids the man just needs his belly full and balls dry. <laughs> Alright guys. Now everyone's here. Fucking finally. Was Discord bugging out for you guys? Discord said that they have issues right now. You be grading them exam papers. Who you be failing? Oh shit. <laughs> Rick be grading them papers. Rick, I'm gonna help help a help an impoverished person out. Find the most impoverished person, um, Rick, whose paper you're grading. If you know they're impoverished or poor, then give them an A. I beg you. I haven't. 
change the life of one of these pupils who may not be the biggest achiever you give him an A on the paper so he, doors start opening up for him in his life <laughs> yeah it's bugging out okay here you go all right Safe at kitchens, okay. Are you ready for an adventure on the world's most dangerous train? Then join me. Attack on trains. Ask any migrant travelling from South America towards the USA. Um, yeah, this could bug it for me. Not loading, yeah, it's not loading all the servers properly. That's straight past fitness, the system. Yep, finesse the system. So yeah, Rick, please... I know you don't want to go on record on my stream in case it's used against you, but the most impoverished kid in a class, giving them a, giving them a A, a plus on, on their papers. <laughs> oh, shizzle. He makes a mockery of your murderous beliefs and liars, dogs and infantile giggles, yeah? He said, yeah, you, you're seeing the comments now, Vector, yeah? He's saying Islam is Nazism. There's a comment that says Islam is Nazism. I don't know if you can see that. Dude, it riled people up. You know who it is? It's Douglas Murray. It's Douglas Murray sending pathetic fans of his. It's all of Douglas Murray's pathetic. Because one of the comments says, Douglas is exposing your murderous, filthy religion and shit like that. It's, it's people who like or follow a fan club for Douglas Murray. Because th that's the only reason they would be attacking me for that i've done many reactions for Piers morgan versus things but the one i got the most attack on is this one for some reason attack on trains oh crap more doing ball yeah i said i would be doing bold and bankrupt pause packing now okay which part of the journey they fear most and they will all answer with two words my best year Oh the man, that's adorable. In English, the little the kiddos, hold on. To the phrase, my best year. The beast, as the beast. In English, is the name given to the freight train which runs from Mexico. Benjamin is the real ball man's gate, yeah. The country, the migrants dream of building new lives. But dude, I, I got hate clicks. For once, I got views based on hate clicks. Usually, when people hate my videos, they don't do views. But I got hate clicks on that red fam. <laughs> They cannot take it. They can't step to me, these motherfuckers. Why is it called the beast? And why is it so feared by the people who use it? Well, because as the families cling to the tops of the carriages... <laughs> yes, suspected. At least a hundred more views on Australian Jesus sex cult than anime. Honestly, this is the best thing I've ever done. i got to thank Kaiser for, for let, making me see the light. i I got to thank Kaiser. If I'm going to thank Kaiser for anything, it's going to be for helping me pivot my channel and giving me interesting content to react to. Legit, he's fucking right. I was an embarrassment to Kaiser. I, I apologize, Kaiser. I was an embarrassment to you, fam. <laughs> Dude, at least, at least I fucking changed. More than I can say for half these people. King Recon's still doing the same bullshit. Rogers Bass still doing the same bullshit. Khan's still doing the same fucking bullshit. Ken Senpai's still doing the same bullshit. Precariously near the wheels, they are at constant risk of not just falling to their deaths, but also of kidnapped by the cartel, robbery by corrupt migration officers, not to mention the very... <laughs> They're still stuck on JJK. <laughs> JJK anime is apologising for creating cross-dressed characters. <laughs> That's the biggest drama you get. You get in the fucking JJK world. Real danger of freezing to death on the cold desert nights. Damn. As my journey among the Venezuelan Caminantes continued. Caminantes, oh shit. Condition, I knew that if I truly wanted to understand the This is the last of bit of, the of, of his journey. Then sooner or later, I too would have to confront the beast. The beast. Good morning from a small town here on the Guatemala border. Myself and Timmy are now going to continue our journey north to the USA, hopefully by using the Beast, the famous, or I should say infamous, train. However, to do that, first, I have to enter Mexico illegally, Timmy. which is over there, by using one of these boats, like a real caminante. Caminante. Vamos. 
Oh, no, 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 Oh, yes? De Venezuela. Oh, sí? Chamo. Oh, chamo. He didn't think so because he was white. <laughs> white and well dressed. To the official bridge. <laughs> Cars going across it. You would but, never uh, have guessed he was I've a walker. I've been illegal in Central America since I left the prison camp. So I don't have the option of going legally into a country. So they'll say, why were you illegal in the last country? So I have to do this. Yeah, see. Sí. Vamos. Listo, señor. Ben, we doing it? We doing it. There he is, Timmy. Timmy T. Oh my God, they're saying we need to tell him again. Todo bien, todo bien. Vamos, 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 Mexico. He's gone to get the military. Vamos, vamos, señor. Wow, we were so lucky. We were spotted by the Guatemalan army. Guatemala? Some people in What uniform. the fuck? And they sent someone down to the riverside to stop us before we left. And you I got better them, things to go, do let's go, let's go. to snitch on people. And, um, it looks like we got away with it. Now we've just got to enter Mexico without getting caught. A man's got better things to do than snitch on man. We can begin our journey up <laughs> to the border. <laughs> Guatemala has an army. <laughs> United States. Do you think they get they get they get favors? They get in like cozy with the army if they snitch. That's that's the only reason they'd be the snitching. Separating Guatemala from Mexico is just used by smugglers. Basically, look, people bringing goods across from Mexico, mostly into Guatemala, Mexico. without Mexico. paying any duty, I suppose, import duty some mafia-run business, and so they just travel across the river. Cookies. Oh, yeah, they're not cookies. Marijuana? Marijuana. <laughs> ah, OK. <laughs> 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 I know he's Free borders. Look how fun it is. Hay muchos caminantes aquí All Venezuela. borders should be open. <laughs> Sí. Dude, look, that would be the life if you could just go back and forth between borders of countries and chill. You know what I mean? I know legality and economy, so economy, you know, and currency and, you know, being on the system and voting and stuff, but <sighs> that's the life. A world without borders. Everyone living their best life. Perfecto. Gracias, señor. Eso es México, ¿sí? Okay. Un minuto, señor. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, señor. Dame cinco dólares. They're like indistinguishable. Yeah. Es suficiente. Perfect. Suficiente. Oh, he actually gave him change. Fuck. Right. Should have given the whole damn whack. Without anyone official in Mexico realizing that we just landed in their country. Today's December 9th, 2023. Gaza still under fire since October. Gaza still going. New Year's. When, just remember when you guys wish Happy New Year's to people. That ain't gonna be Happy New Year's for people in Gaza. 2023, same as 2024. Hola, señor. Hola, señor. Hola, señor. Hola, señor. Hola, señor. Hola, señor. No, pero ahí les están dando permiso para pasar o para ir para allá. Okay, gracias. Sí. Gracias. Oh shit. Immigration officer up there in the woods, see him with the red hat. Immigration. Immigration officer, fuck. Why do they wear a red hat? On top of a hill, watching down over the river. And we're illegal here in Mexico. Should be in camel. Past him somehow. Because if he says, why have you entered our country illegally? Who knows what trouble you get into? Caminantes. Where are the other guys? Lo darían. Con tu, ah, con... Tienes niños. Y él también. A través de Arien, con él. Wow. Demasiado duro. Sí, 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 sí. He must be one of the dads with the baby on his chest. Hiding in the movie shed. La bestia, o autobús, o como. O no sé. They were robbed. They were robbed. They were robbed on the bus by the Guatemalan police. Guatemala robbed these guys. So, entonces, autobús. Motherfuckers. Si no, los bajan del bus y los regresan. Entonces tuvimos que entregar todo porque para que no nos bajaran. Ya habíamos pagado pasaje, todas esas cosas y para que no se perdiera. Esos fueron los. The Guatemalan people were very kind to help us. Man, that's disgusting. Convicted is the dad with the baby on the chest. Pleased to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Charming young lady. Mucho, demasiado. Demasiado. She's gonna ask him for money. 
ayer. When a kid comes up to you in places like this and they're nice to you, they're probably hustling. They're probably hustling. Mejor que mi casa en Inglaterra. Better than my house in England. He really is bankrupt. <laughs> We're cooking. Oh, 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 is it is is this 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 what a journey. Man, look, so this little look at the resilience of these people, man. On the board, we've got Tamala. Is we, you know what, what that mother is doing for her kids, cooking, doing that? The average person wouldn't even be able to do that. They'd be whining and complaining, and they'd kill themselves, legit. They'd kill themselves at the prospect of having to survive, even like that. But yet that mother's doing it. Using cardboard fucking pots that she got from someone building her own fire. You know what I mean? Mans can't even live with that. You give someone a fucking lighter, little pot of gasoline, right? People can't even do that. Just taken over by immigrants or migrants from Venezuela. Down here, there are people. I, want, I played one or two chapters of uh, Life is Strange to Vected. I, I wish I'd finished it. I actually wish I'd finished it. I did it on Mixer, if you remember. I think you were there. You, were, I think you were there and someone was there. I was streaming Life is Strange. I wish I'd finished it. Their clothes. Here, there's a whole family set up, hanging their clothes to dry. One of my friends in the tent down there. And all these people that you see have incredible stories. Some of them had pretty bad things happen to them on their journey. I was lucky, myself and Timmy. But many of them were robbed. Some of them were assaulted. I mean, yeah, they're lucky to be here. Despite the hardships they went through, they're very lucky to have made it here. Right, let's push on. Oh. These people are waiting to pass through immigration. Immigration is just up there, but I don't want to pass through immigration. Because they're probably going to ask... The one you like most out of three, three games, Guatemala, yeah. Or from Costa Rica, or from Panama, go back. or from any of the other countries we pass through. Senor, hay immigración acá? No, Imig no. No policía? No. no. Nadie, no. nadie, gracias, gracias. Nice. Right, they just said there's no police or immigration up ahead. Let's see if that's They better not be. They better not be. Well, we've made it officially into Mexico, Policia. it seems. Well, not officially, unofficially. But um, now, let's get on some transport and begin our journey. <laughs> Nobody <more> cares <laughs> to go in into Mexico. Mexico. Ready? Let's get you rocking, mate. Let's do it. Hola, wey. Toshi be the policia. What the hell's going on there? When I was looking online, I saw that the bestia starts in a town called Tula, or Tula, Tula Hidalgo, somewhere in the middle of the country. So we're now going to jump on a bus to that place. Probably going to be joined by these caminantes. And, um, Easy to cross time. over to America from yeah, the Mexico yeah. border. Head north. Perfecto. Muchas Tula. gracias. Adios, mami. Mami. So we're heading, myself and Timmy, where is the other caminante? You haven't seen much of Timmy in this video so far. Here he is. We're heading to a town Timmy. called Tula. I'm about to get in trouble for filming, and then we're going to jump on a bus. Yo, Isa, Adam. Disculpe me. Mi nombre? Ah, you do. Ah. Bald and bankrupt. Calvo sin dinero. Calvo sin dinero. Calvo sin dinero. Calvo sin dinero. Calvo y no tengo dinero. He explained his YouTube channel. Sí, yo, no, yo estaba en Caracas. Ah, pero no hablé como Caracas. En Petare. En la noche, solo. Todo bien. No te robaron. No. Soy malandro más grande que ellos. They get robbed because the man's worried that RAF is going to come and bomb, bomb the place. Suerte. No voy a delir. Bye bye. Border Patrol Police ain't allowed on the Native American reservations bordering Mexico. Okay, no fence or anything. And so what do the red Native Americans feel about people crossing into their... Like crossing in, using it? I bet the Native Americans just let them come through to spite America for what they did. You can just get off and walk around the stop. Because otherwise you're going to get caught. Myself and Timmy... 
Mm. We seem to be getting away with it. I mean, technically speaking, Mexicans are raped. Native Americans. The raped version of them. Gracias, señor. That was lucky. He just looked at my passport page, I'm not showing you guys, and um, he said, yeah, fair enough. Wow, the thought of Venezuelans that have been caught. Cool. Wow. There was about a hundred Venezuelans in a tent that had all been caught. Cool. They all caught. It's unfair that just because we got a British passport or a Greek passport that we just can sail through. And British, British, British passport is like gold mined worldwide. The Brit passport, the American passport is like, like a bar of gold. <laughs> A lot of the land even populated so they don't see it. Yeah. They keep in their little tribes. Oh. Oh. The caminante has arrived in whatever town this is. If I get desperate for a hot wife, this is a joke, I don't mean like that. Desperate for a hot wife, I could just travel the globe, find a hot chick who's obsessed with getting at the British passport. <laughs> Speak to the train. Laredo. Okay. Laredo. Pero de aquí de Tula ya no hay tren. No? No. Mi amigo habla español mejor que yo. No, de aquí la bestia. No. Timmy's angry with me. <laughs> Why Timmy angry? Because I brought us here and it seems we're in the wrong town. I mean, Bolt spoke with some people on the street <laughs> yesterday. That they told him we should come here. I never even double check if that's true. I trusted him. Now this random Tula city. <laughs> Let's not give up. They got lost. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. <laughs> they got lost. Again? I think the Swiss passport. No, sorry, not your Sweden, but the Swiss passport is probably worth a lot. Sí, porque cuando ya vas a entrar hacia Titalakia, de hecho, ibas a ver a un ladito. A un lado, yendo de Titalakia, vas a ver a un lado. Okay. El tren ahí se para y vas a ver. ¿De aquí cuándo sales de aquí? No, sabes? estás hablando de 20, 30 minutos aquí. Ah, de aquí. Ah, sí, sí, oh, sí, perfecto. Entonces puedo. Sí. Ok. Sí, Super. O sea, ahí para, ahí hay un oh, este. Good. We're okay. Sí, este, ok, nice. Hay una casa de sí, we're we're in the right place. 20 minutes in a taxi, correct? Ya, yeah, no, 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 Let's go. Let's jump in a taxi and go to the bestie. Yeah? Escuchaste sobre el tren La Bestia. The funds must be running low right now. Sí. Yo escuché que en la titu, a titulaquia, tal vez nosotros podamos uh, encontrar. ¿Qué piensas sobre eso? Tal vez. Yeah, he's moody. Sí. Uh, he's young. He ain't got the patience. That's a... Me puedes llevar ahí, eh, donde ahí, donde pasa la bestia. I don't blame him. Perfecto. The impatience of youth. Gracias por ayudar. Gracias, amigo. Wow. The taxi driver has said we're going to go and find the train in titulaquia. We've seen the best here with immigrantes. Okay, now we're getting. Wow. Now, how do we jump on it? Gracias, señor. So we just lost the best here. Oh, wait, so. This turned into a movie. Taste the train. Attack on trains. Okay, perfecto. Heading north to America. Oh, nice, yeah. I don't doubt it. UAE, for sure. If you're a UAE citizen, man, the benefits. Hola, chama. ¿Todo bien? Sí, la bestia. ¿Tú vas a usar hoy? Hoy no, mañana. Mañana. Mañana viene el tren y es que se frena acá, pues, donde está mi familia y muchas personas que no pueden subir. Oh, muchas personas allí. No pueden subir. 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 No Oh, you can maybe jump on the slow train. Okay. It maybe comes tomorrow. Maybe day after tomorrow. Okay. We're not waiting for this train. No. The one that just crossed. Yeah. Goes very fast. Can't jump on it because they have families. I think they cannot yeah. do it. Yeah. Maybe we can do it. Yeah, with women they can't do it. Or kids. Can't jump on a train, or we wait a couple days for the next one. Either way, we found the route of the best year. That's the most important thing. Let's go down here and see. The beast. 
It's like riding on a beast. It, that's not slow enough. No, nope, that's not slow enough. Yeah, Maduro is a president, he's a huge motherfucker. Maduro is a son of a bitch. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Everyone hates the Maduro, man. They all be saying they hate Maduro. <laughs> Maduro is not very popular here with this group of Venezuelans. <laughs> and that's why they're going to America. Oh, look at this. Amrika, Amrika. Here we have this house, which is the house of immigrants. So you can see the immigrants have put their tents outside and all their things here. Where the wet gone? Where the wet gone? All along the railway line, all along the route of the Bestia, to help the immigrants. They can get water here, probably, and some food at some time. It's closed now. But, um... Hola, buenos. Todo bien? Buscando la Bestia. Aquí, pero cuando? Cuando se dé la oportunidad. Whenever we get the chance. Ah, man, he looks kind of, kind of cute. I'm not gonna lie. This guy looks kind of cute. <laughs> not in that way. So this Caminante doesn't know when it is. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. He looks like a squirrel. No. Yeah, water. Like, but as a man. No sabes. No sabes. No one knows when the train is. People just Big wait until there's a slow train passing and then they jump on it. That's it. Just gotta wait. But gotta wait for it to be slow. Stuff. Because myself and some Tim people and probably break a leg or some head. shit. Ow! My ankles. Trying to get on. Hey. Iran! Hey. Iran! Hey. Wow. I said I'm gonna buy some Coca Cola for a party, and she's like, yeah, but make sure you buy the rum as well. <laughs> These Venezuelan migrants don't mess around. Let's they love the drink. Up. They love the drink, fam. Gotta numb themselves. So the man here having a beer in this shop is confirming that the next train is on Sunday. Sunday. We can't wait here till Sunday. It's now Wednesday. There goes another train. Would you say that's slow enough? Oh. Yeah. Ron Blanco. Ooh, wow, Baca Bacardi. Bacardi. <laughs> what great people here. And they've given us a bottle of rum. And I'm going to give the bottle of rum to the Caminantes. Vamos a tomar un poco juntos. Claro? Who gets it? Perfecto. Oh, he didn't. Okay, nice. No backwash. Nice, he actually, he actually sipped it like a, like a real person. No backwash from your fucking saliva going back in. Yeah, that's how you do it. So, we've got to decide, myself and Timmy, the two caminantes who've traversed all of South and Central America, pretty much, we've got to decide what to do. Two options, Timmy. Tell the, tell the viewers. There's two options, mate. One option is to follow what the caminantes say, which is two words. Fe y paciencia, which basically means faith and patience. Mashallah. That's one option. Just wait. Faith and patience, mashallah. Second option. What else? My opinion. Hotel. Is take a little bus, go to the next place of the Bestia route, where many trains are crossing, and take a train from there tomorrow. As Timmy said, you okay. have faith and patience. Two. <laughs> no patience. He's right about two, though. Let's push on. He's right about two. Look, there is nothing to do here. There's nothing, nothing to do here. Good morning from a cheap hotel. Oh, he's in a hotel. In the town of Irapuato in central Mexico. We've been told the best year leaves from here. However, we've got a problem. Sunday. Timmy. Timmy. Is Timmy sick or something? Oh. Timmy is in no condition to come on the bestia. So we had a discussion and we decided that I'm going to leave him here. He's going to recover and make his way to another city in the north where I'm going to hopefully meet him. Oh my lord. 
getting split up like this. Timmy is like Zest. <laughs> nah, don't say that. He's already made. He's already made the journey. So I've don't say that, Timmy Kaiser. I made a new friend from Venezuela, who's going to show me where the best year is in this town. All the immigrants hang out. Let's go and have a look. Dude, you know what this reminds me of? I'm so, I'm so, I'm gonna have to apologize in advance for this. This is like the, uh, uh, t um, Breath of the Wild, where you have to wait for the Chinese dragon to slow down under the bridge, so you can jump on it and get the scale. <laughs> it's like this beast. I like the the fact that they call this train the beast. It's like a beast that is like wildly erratic. Nobody knows when it's gonna slow down, speed up, and you're just trying to catch this Chinese dragon and fucking. It's like an adventure, but real life, not fake like Nintendo shit. Is que Mexico is uh, peligroso para los caminantes, o no? Sí, peligrosísimo. Por qué? Porque cartel, porque delincuencia. Mucha delincuencia y los sí. carteles. Okay. Y ellos quieren robaron caminantes. Sí, quieren robar, secuestrar. Well, if I didn't feel 100% like a real caminante before, I certainly do now. Oh, stumbling around by a railway track, heavy bag, with water on my back, hot sun beating down on me. Oh. The thing is, he, this guy does have a safety net. He does have a safety net that not everyone has. If he wanted to not complete this journey, he could just take a flight out of here. I'd assume he's got the backup funds to take a flight out of here back to England or where, wherever he comes from, wherever he's situated. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's just families, little kids. This is the one reason why the people like this can make this journey, like, without the risk. Different trains going to different parts of the border. At, at worst, they get deported for free, like they were mentioning. Oh, at worst, we will get in prison for a bit and then deported back to where we came from some of these people don't have anywhere to get deported to they either live like fucking live like beggars where they are or they take the f trip so they can actually get a better life this guy can get fucking deported back to where he's from cuando es la próxima no sabes frontera necesitas esperando si ok de donde venezuela here we go guys, here we go. Will it slow down? There's a train coming, everyone's on the railway line because it might be one that stops and we can jump on. Let's see if it stops. Because people oh, and children man. can't jump on one that's moving. Let's see. Oh, come on. How long will it sit stop. for? That train was gonna stop and take us to the border, but it's just moving, shunting itself around the goods yards. But there's so many trains here. What if some people do actually one get there, on? One there, one over there. But not one that's going in our direction, up to the border. Gifted it to someone. By Monterey. So I can see Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> Twerk with the real woman. Oh shit. One of the guys up here is telling us the story how he likes old women. He wants to dance with old women. Vector, that's you. That's you, Vected. He likes to dance with all women. That's you. Con abuelas. Con abuelas. <laughs> He's a granny fucker. <laughs> Vected, you're a granny fucker. <laughs> You'll be famous on YouTube for liking grannies. <laughs> sobre, sobre abuelas. <laughs> We're having a good time here. We're having a good time waiting for the train. <laughs> Look at the resilience of these people. Do you think, can you imagine white middle class kids like this waiting for a train? I can imagine them fucking conheads, uh, wee nerd conheads, black hoodie with the fucking iPods on, looking at the phone, complaining. Mom, I hate it here, mom. I have to wait for this fucking train. Wait for this on their fucking little fucking phones. And these people, look at the resilience of these fucking people. Laughing, happy, making jokes. I 
lot of these South American peeps are a little delusional that American life is paradise. Once they arrive, a better lot wish they didn't come life they may not have a lot of material possessions in their home countries but at least they have connections support simple life yeah because it becomes more complicated than their lives their lives become slavery wage slavery fucking bills taxes evading the police lord you don't know of any hot famous grannies only milfs you lord, lord don't know of any hot famous grannies only milfs i'm i promise you this hideo kojima knows all the hot famous grannies <laughs> he's always he's always gassing up his childhood crushes from old films if you want to know who the hot grannies are go to Hideo Kojima's fucking page they'd be fine if they got the iPhones to keep them occupied yeah but they'll be complaining on their iPhones bro sis man fucking hate it here like these people are laughing man do enlighten us with your milf list none of them look malnourished they at least have food yeah Kajim would cast all the gilfs in his games if he could. Oil man, all destroyed these guys. Russia and China. Oil for manpower from Russia and China. But now he has sanctions. Sí. Dude, the sanctions have ki they killed Venezuela. That's why they can't sell oil anymore. That's fucked up, man. They're so fucking scared of Russia and China, man. I, I want Amer the America's days are numbered. I want America to become just like anywhere, like UK, fucking France, Greece. Let America fucking die, fam. They keep everything to themselves, they don't care about the people. Yeah, Maduro, that's what they've been saying. They all hate Maduro. We've heard a train. Maybe we can jump on it. Vamos. Oh, here we go. Will this train stop? Maybe the train that's coming is for us. We'll see. The anticipation. The anticipation, fam. No, 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 no. Just slow down for these guys. This is a train carrying cars, so it's not going to stop. We need empty box cars. Empty box cars. Esperando. Esperando más. Sí, claro. This chap here was in the Venezuelan army. Oh shit. Because he's left the country, run away from the country, left the army. Without Defector. Pressure. He can never, ever go back to his country. Imagine that. He can he... never, unless there's a change in government, which doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. A Defector. He can never go back to Venezuela. Can't see his mum again, never see his dad again, his brothers and sisters. Bloody hell. That's the reality of the life here of the Caminantes. They're leaving that's what behind. The... I mean, when you think about it, that's, that's, that's no different than what they did to Edward Snowden, fam. No different than what they did to Edward Snowden. That they knew before to build a better At least they wouldn't kill him though. In America. We are moving. He, but the would he risk that on his family if someone snitched or found out that he's back? If the military did, I mean, actually, the military are probably harassing his family right now. It might actually be better that he goes back and get caught. To be honest. Or making money to send fam tickets out. Yeah, that's there. Yeah, that that would be good. We're starting to lose hope. But then we gotta hope that he, if he illegally crosses, that he has a life. You know what I mean? These are the people that need to have some humanity. Like this track. So we're gonna walk along to another these people have no options. Where well, there's more shade as well, and chill out there for a little bit. Maybe go to a shop and buy some stuff. Wouldn't mind buying a few beers for the families here. So I've been to the shop and I bought yeah. beer and chicken got me amigo chicken. for the caminantes, pollo y cervezas. Chicken and beers. I've got a little surprise for you guys when we get there. Yeah, true guys. Someone sent me a little cheeky text message. Timmy. Let's see. The Timmy. Who's waiting for us unexpectedly up ahead? 
Is it Timmy? Is it your boy Timmy? Back to where the Caminantes are. Oh, nice. He's hiked. Jump. Dude, don't do get fucking slid under the. There we go. Salud, chamos. Krista Allen, Kate Beckinsale, Angelina, Carmen Electra, Demi Moore, Elizabeth Hurley. Nice, yeah, and recognize most of those names. I was just told a horrible piece of news, which is that a week ago, the cartel stopped one of these trains, the Caminantes, took a oh. hundred people, and robbed every single one of them. What? Um, these people have nothing. What, what was the cartel gonna do with? Kids' clothes and jewelry. Dude, what? How pathetic. How demonic must the cartel be? There are people who already have nothing. These people have nothing because they're going to somewhere so they can make something. You, why would why would the cartel rob people like this? Demonic motherfuckers, I swear. These people have nothing, and you're robbing people with nothing why the best is the world's most dangerous train i know that i'm having a bit of a laugh here and like there's a good atmosphere but there's a reason why it's called the bestia the beast because bad things happen to people on this train and as we get closer now to the time of departure i'm starting to feel god don't piss poor themselves if they do this what could happen to me in the night oh. there's timmy Well, guys, do you remember I promised you a guest star, a surprise guest in the show? Did you wonder who it was? Maybe Simon Wilson, Harold Balder? It's Timmy Bloody Timmy. Carter. He dragged himself out of that cheap hotel, Done. diarrhea and vomiting, and he's made it to the bestia. How do you feel? Terrible, but I have a bad, bad thing, competition. If I know you're going to this train, <laughs> I cannot stay, man. Don, Don, reunited, fam. Y qué tú piensas será más más difícil, tren o Darien? El tren. Tren. The train. Porque en el tren, pues, en el Darien vas a tu puedes, tú puedes quedarte si quieres y resguardarte en el en el tren no debes estar resguardado si tú has montado sobre sobre el tren. En dado caso que sea lluvia, más peligro, más riesgo, por todo. Dude, he's actually saying it's worse on the train. Fucking hell. Is this the one? I know a lot of you um, have different opinions about the migrant crisis, especially Americans coming to America, all these people. A lot of you have very strong feelings about it. And I won't impart my opinion on it. America's not my country. It's not my nice. problem in a sense. Here we go. But what I will say is that I hope in the video so far you've seen that these people aren't bad people. Yes. They're not what Trump said they were or how he described them. Yes. They're families, regular dudes and women and children who just want a better life because their country is totally screwed up. And um, if you came from a country like Venezuela, you'd be doing exactly the same thing that they're doing and trying to change their life for the better. And so would I. Don, my man said it. What would you think otherwise? He's lived their lives, fam. It's your. Oh, man. Y vino para la Coca-Cola. No vengan acá, porque aquí pasa el tren de la bestia. El tren de la bestia. The piece is terrible. Terrible? Por qué? Tengo miedo. Es bestia. La bestia. Aquí, aquí van a sufrir, aquí van a sufrir muchísimo, porque van a caminar por tantos lados. Mira, no kids are so innocent, man. Porque aquí pasa migración. These are the kind of people getting blown up in Gaza, man. They don't deserve it. En el comienzo, y en el comienzo puede pasar migración, así que no vengan. These are real human beings. These are real human beings, not Americans. Not Israelis. And all these people are going on it. These are real people. The railway staff have said we're not going to stop the train. Or these are travellers. These, these people are doing what our fucking ancestors did, fam. These people are living how our ancestors lived. Hardship, struggle for the better life.
literal walk to a better life struggle where death is fucking a real thing trailing you unless you pay us so there's been a guy going around with a plastic bag collecting money from all the Caminantes myself and Tim included um, yeah being held to ransom basically because ransom. if the plane doesn't slow down the women and the children can't jump on it so they, what are they going to do Canada. Canada. Dude, this guy wants to go Canada. Oh, Canada will take you. Dude, Canada will take these guys. They all say that yeah, it's the worst country to pass through because immigration is just like stealing from them, ripping them off. Oh, in Mexico's immigration. That's disgusting, man. That's disgusting. My name is Daniel Morales. I am from Morales. The best country in the world. Seguro? Yes, my friend. Por qué tú quieres visitar Estados Unidos? Why do you want to go U.S.? Money. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yes. They still love their home countries, but you want to go send money back like the Polish do? Sneaky Timmy, when he came here today, went to the shop and bought a blanket. He's got a blanket, he's got a hoodie. I've got this and this. I'm going to freeze to death, Timmy. Share the blanket. Where's your money? You left me sick on a bed in a random town in Mexico. <laughs> Timmy is day. salty. I found the strength to come here. It's salty. Now I have my stuff, you have your own stuff. You made your bed this morning and you left me alone. So now, that's what you have. Oh shit, Timmy is vindictive. Climbing onto the roof of the train. This is going to be a rough, rough night if we're all on the roof. Shit, I was hoping that we were going to be inside. So they managed to bribe him then. They managed to bribe him. Contigo. Everyone's rushing to get on the roof. We don't want to miss it after waiting all day. Dudes, I thought they were going to be in the compartments. Oh shit. Wow, this is fucking crazy. Well, they were going to be in the compartment. Yeah. I know that in the preview they was on top. Oh, they bribed the train station, guys. We're gonna get on the fucking Chinese dragon. <laughs> How long they got? What a don. Yeah, let the women and children. It's a prank. This, this is what I mean. Fucking dare something like Trump. All these. After seeing this, how can Trump people with no fucking heart? Pregnant women are willing to take this journey. Fuck me. You'd only do that if you're desperate. Vamos. Vamos. Lento, lento, lento. The, the, the train better have stopped for a good amount of time. Oh, gracias, señor. Dude, this is so dangerous. This is so fucking dangerous. More people getting on and going to the back of the train, people finding their own places on the train. Fuck, that was crazy. Not for me so much, but for the people. Like one of the women was pregnant. Seven months pregnant. She's got a ride on this train. God, we don't know how good we have it, man. We don't know how good we have it. Right. Bruh. I think I need to get dressed for the night. It's gonna be bloody There's no cold. journalist who'd want to go through this. Get my mad ball and bankrupt doing it, fam. I'm ready for the night on the train through the desert with me amigos de Venezuela. <laughs> Fuck your country. Affected America, I mean. Dude, if it rains and someone slips off, that is fucked. The journey has begun. God knows where it's gonna end. Lionel. Man, these people have my respect. 
I don't care how illegitimate or illegal. I don't care. I just don't care. These people have my fucking respect. This is shit my grandfather went through, fleeing fucking India. There's hundreds and hundreds While their neighbors were looting them and attacking them, and sangs who were part of the fucking Indian army were attacking them as they tried to get on trains, tried to kill them on trains, they had to kick them off. This is the kind of shit my grandfather went with, except when these people are doing it in 2020 fucking three. Yeah. The biggest challenge is 1 a.m. to 4:30 in the morning. Oh yeah. That's when they freeze. No less than my respect. I have a nice blanket here. <laughs> Jimmy's got a blanket. What are you doing? <laughs> Jimmy's got a blanket. What an arsehole. Blanket. Went to the shop. <laughs> went to the shop and bought himself one blanket. He he bought all the ne necessities. Then the, whatever money he had left, that he was given for the bribes. <laughs> so he's all like, he's all like ready. Timmy's fucking fully tooled up. <laughs> what about your money, fam? What happened to your money, fam? All I've done for him on this trip, promoted him, grew his channel. <laughs> Dude, this is easily one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. Easily one of the best documentaries. Gotta thank you, Kaiser. Gotta thank you, Kaiser. This has been one of the best talkies ever. $1,500. Almost $100. I hope everyone here makes the journey. No one dies. Inshallah, everyone here made like made this journey, and no one died. Of water and food up to the Caminantes down here. Oh, sh oh shit! People are. Oh man, look at that. Look at the resilience. Look at the look at the hum humanity of these people. Look at the fucking humanity of these people. Americans wouldn't piss on Ill illegal migrants if they're on fire. They would not piss on them. These guys are throwing food packages, aid packages, water bottles. They're not attacking them. This would be throwing stones. Proud boys and all these fucking right wing militia would be throwing rocks at people who made it a journey, a death. These are fucking real people. Gracias. <laughs> Medicina. You, you don't get a right, you, you, you don't have no, I don't care whether in Sweden, America, UK, America, you have no right to be inhuman. You have no right to be inhuman from your position of relative comfort, calling these people animals and criminals. Gracias, tengo. Gracias. Gracias. Ah, ah. Wow. They're just like chucking everything at us. Christians know that these kind of people will inherit the earth. The Bible says the meek will inherit the earth. These are the meek. So why are you attacking them so much? Why is it Christians mainly attacking the meek like this? Someone threw a big Give us your poor. Board. And I need this sweater, trust me, I'm absolutely free. Statue of Liberty. Wow, you gotta say, Mexicans are the greatest people. To come out of their houses at midnight and to throw food and medicines and sweaters and everything else for the Caminantes, that says a lot about the nation and its people. Gracias. You find more humanity in a journey like this than the custom for civilized comforts of the West. How are you doing back there, Timmy? I'm dreaming, bro. Dreaming of what? Nothing. Please go. Dreaming. Watching the border? Yes. Two months. It's been a long, bloody journey. But you know what? What? When it's over, we'll miss it. You will. You will miss it. What a dumb. 
it's invaluable the insight he's provided it may be for views on this channel and and you know but he does if he goes through something like this he deserves to make he deserves to make a living like this he deserves to make a living he's he's in the shoes of these people from the bestia after what has been one of the worst nights of my life freezing cold didn't sleep for one minute Bloody Timmy had a blanket, it was all nice and warm and snug. Me just freezing, shivering. But we've stopped here in the middle of nowhere. Como dormiste? Mucho frío. Mucho frío, demasiado. Become so happy. <laughs> Clap along what a... if you feel like a... <laughs> And all these people here... Dude, this guy got my respect. Hundreds, and amigo aquí. This guy got my respect. <laughs> Bro, on top of a train, no one will be able to sleep. It was terrible. No one slept a minute. It was so cold. So, do they jump off here now, or what's going on? Diarrea, tenía. He diarrhea. So much for his blanket, fam. So yeah, guy, man, bro, fucked up here. So man, I need when we see shit off the side of the train. You shot off the side of the train. Dude, you need to be careful when you come down off that train then. The wind Look resistance would have fucking on. Look how they tied their baby on to the train so he doesn't fall off. Oh they tied their baby to the train. Wow. This is so si para seguridad. Si Tora bien dormiste Chris. Man. No, no, I can't. <laughs> so that's what I can't have anything less than respect for these people. Fall off in the night times, so obviously it's very dangerous. And so that's why Chris we need to make their easy. lives easier, man. Keep them on the train. Bueno, Chris. Que es tu plan? Que es tu plan? Don't you think? It, it, don't you think that if you made a journey like this, you deserve to be in America? This is what we say about Jannah in heaven. You suffered. You you made that long struggle, and you kept your sanity, and you kept your faith. The gates will be open to you, fam. For people that made this journey, they would not have made this journey if they absolutely didn't want to do their best for their kids. And you know these people are gonna work. You know these people are gonna work. If they, if they went through that, they will contribute to the economy. Yeah, but not everyone, not not everyone does though. They don't have the cojones, kinda. They don't have the cojones, kinda, kinda, to make this journey. You deserve to be rewarded for the struggle. Wait, what did he say? My grandmother died six months ago. <laughs> My goal was always to go to the United States. Okay. <laughs> he has a son in Peru? <laughs> Mateo. To provide for him? A van is pulled up next to our train. Giving away some kind of food. But do you think one million, that many people are trying to exploit United States system? Let's see what they've got. Like, I doubt that many of them even know what to expect when they get there. They just watch it on films, like you say. But the films don't encourage you to exploit America's benefit system, social security system. They, they want to go there to make, make themselves, you know what I mean? Work, work up as a landscaper, gardener, m mind alone. <laughs> they don't exploit it. They're there to work, yeah. So let them contribute, man. Coffee or tea in the morning, but she's run out. And they do it for a, pit a pittance, you know what I mean? I think maybe Timmy needs a nappy. Timmy needs a nappy. Done. <laughs> yeah. Exploit the white man. You deserve it. You guys exploit the white man. All he's worth. The Melandros are on the roof. The amazing thing is that these people have absolutely nothing, which is why they're using the bloody bestia. And they know that myself and Timmy are here with an expensive camera. It's true they don't pay taxes, but they would work for a pittance. You could get them to do work for you that costs probably half or a third of what it costs what other people extort you for. You know what I mean? So there is a there is a 
upside as well. They work cheaper. They work cheaply or cheaper unless some white dude ex starts exploiting them. Like they have the middleman, they're hiring them and exploiting them and f they keeping the money and paying them little. They clean houses and you pay them in cash. Yeah, exactly. Probably think we're much, much richer than we really Fuck are. Fuck taxes, man. The Fed constantly dipping in your pocket anyway. Don't white mans complain that the Fed's constantly dipping in man's pocket. Nobody likes paying taxes, least of all the fucking rich. I don't know why the rich are telling the middle class to hate Something. the little guys. Everyone's totally chilled. Although these people have bloody nothing, they'd love another ten dollars or fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. I could really make a big difference to their journey. But even the rich don't like it. Good people. Tell them you motherfuckers pay your taxes. You illegals pay your taxes. You fuckers don't pay your taxes. Well, guys, no, not my pocket. It's fed. A bit of a no decision, and that's because news has come down the line. That we ain't going anywhere until the evening, another nine or ten hours. Um, the engine needs to be changed. So we ain't going to hang around on top of the bestia, as exciting as it is, for nine or ten hours. So the plan is, walk down to the highway and hitchhike north to whatever our next stop is. Timmy? I'm going to hitchhike. That's it. Have you enjoyed the bestia at least? No. a big experience, but if I was better, I would be doing it more. Yeah. Timmy's really bloody ill, unfortunately. He's got um, he's got the shits really badly, um, and a bit of a fever. So um, anyway, it's probably not a bad idea to get off, get him sorted what out. Did he, what did he eat, and, uh, Dodgy? Yeah, that would have done this, because he he year, didn't catch it. This this guy didn't catch it. He must have had something dodgy or something. I mean, he's been hanging around with this guy all the all the journey, so. Yeah, evicted, precisely. All these people I waited with yesterday. You don't deserve to punch that. Well, forget deserve, you shouldn't punch down like that. You'll be okay, these guys won't be. Tax or no, these guys won't be okay. Ball body condition. <laughs> True. Drank bad water, yeah, probably. Someone who works in the railway. You will boil your. You've been places like this, and even in Middle East, Shitsville and stuff, you got to boil your water before you drink it. Dios te bendiga. God be with you. And that's sadly. Dios te bendiga. On the best, yeah. Dios. God be with you. God fearing people, mashallah. Good evening, guys, from the city of Monterrey in northern Mexico. Myself and Timmy Carter have been here a few days. Yeah, I watched the Bangalore, Bangalore one. Venezuela, who've been here for a few months. Let's go and meet I'll probably end with the Bangalore one, but that's about it. I'm not watching the other one, where they do like the wrap up or whatever. Let's, um, yeah, let's go and meet some. Even brushing your teeth with bad walk can be like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Go bien, go bien. This is mi amigo Chamo de Venezuela, who also crossed the Darien. Oh shit. ¿Cómo es tu relación con los, la gente de México? ¿Qué ellos piensan sobre los caminantes aquí? So he crossed the Darien. How's he already set up? We, all, we have a lot of Mexican clients. So he's got business and everything. Oh, the owner of the... He's just working there as a barber now, I guess. Oh, he's settled, okay. Wow. And over here... Dude, I once had a really bad food poisoning. It, the worst diarrhea ever. It, I was like a hose on both ends. That's all I'll say. Vomiting and diarrhea at the same time. It was bad. So it's not just Venezuelans. There's Cubans here. It was full on food poisoning. We met people from Africa. I couldn't keep anything down. I couldn't keep water down. Liquids down. It was like a hose on both ends. And I'm talking ho like literal water was coming out of my body. It was nothing, no food, no nothing. Literal throwing up water, I couldn't keep water down. 
so bad. I bought some pizzas for Andras and his friends, his apartment. Let's go meet them, have a little pizza party. It was, and it was so bad at one time, I, I threw up on my bed. I couldn't keep no food down. <laughs> Don't listen to Timmy. The people Got rid of that, those blankets and shit. So we've come I don't know why. I don't know why. Lips. And what it is, is basically a big house with separate rooms for different migrants can rent by the week, I think he said. I literally had to drink, take musco pan and drink literally raw, raw, half a raw bottle of apple cider vinegar to like settle me. It was so bad. So this place is basically just full of migrants waiting to go to America. And um, yeah, they rent rooms in houses like this. And we've invited them all for pizza. Here they are. The thing with food poisoning is it goes after like three days, two days, but it's really bad for those three days. Your body's just trying to expel everything. Andres is going to show me the room that he lives in here and show me how they live, the Caminante. It's basically. You can't even call it the P word, Toshi. There was no food in me. So it's just war, like a hose coming up. Cuatro personas aquí. Cuatro personas. Oh, hola. Buenas noches. No quiero molestar, solo quiero ver cómo tú vives aquí. Wow. So, ¿cuánto, cuándo es tú? Decent beds, at least. Aquí. So this is... Bunk bed. This place. There's a young lady underneath. And, um, yeah, this is how they live. A little roomy. ¿Cuántos tú pagas cada mes? Pagamos 500 por persona. ¿Cuántos dólares? Eso, eh, más o menos. 35 dólares. $35. So he's paying $36 a week, okay. So he's paying $36 every week to stay basically here in this little room with other people. He has a locker here, it's his um, locker where he can keep some stuff. And you've got a fan and stuff like that, another fan here blowing on the beds. But this is the life of the immigrants. Here. Still better than what they had before. They've left everything behind to come and live in a little room like this on their way to America. He gets to earn some money at least. And here they have the baño para cuantos personas? They ain't too bad. No, so there's only one toilet here in Russia. They ain't too it's bad, man. They ain't bad either. It's, um, it's not an easy life being an, a migrant. Yeah, exactly. You're robbed by the police. It's an upgrade to You're what they had. You're robbed by flipping delinquent people. You have to stay in a room with three other people. Oh, man. It's, um, uh, yeah. it's independence. No doing this for fun. They're doing this because they really are escaping a hard situation in Venezuela. Otherwise, they wouldn't be putting themselves through this. His family's probably happy. Oof. Yeah, happy. I don't have to do it for real. Do you crees que en tu vida tu vas a volver a Venezuela una vez o no más? Nunca. ¿Cómo tú sientes sobre eso? ¿Es triste para usted? Pues. No, I see. Home is where the heart is. Yep, home is where the heart is. Si tengo a mi papá y mi mamá vivo, obviamente. Para mí, para mí lo fundamental ahorita es el crecimiento de mis dos niños pequeños. Tengo cuatro. Tengo cuatro niños, dos grandes y dos pequeños. Y ya los primos de ahorita son mis dos hijos pequeños. Muy interesante hablar contigo. Suerte, suerte en Estados Unidos. Guys, good morning from just outside Montevideo. We've come here to look for a train to ride north to the border, and we see one in the distance. Bloody hell! Timmy got that good stamina. He got young man stamina. That's going too fast. Oh, it's slowing. Oh. We found more people here waiting. And there's more people walking along the railway lines. Hey, but we've missed that one. Hopefully another one comes because it's really cold. Yeah, it's gone. Vinos, contigo. ¿Cuántos? El, sí. Yeah, so we found here a little group of migrants. At least he's got a change of clothes. All going north to the border. Ah, ¿y dónde eres? Venezuela y cuál ciudad? Venezuela. No. No? Guaira. Guaira. No, Guaira. Ah, ¿Dónde es uh, un playa? Sí. 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 Claro. No, el playa es lindo. ¿Y tú usaste antes, uh, viajaste en el bestia? La bestia. No. Primera vez. Primera vez. Yo, you only want to take the beast once, fam. Why would you want to keep taking the beast? Timmy running like that. Diarrhea. Para 
Man, look at these people, man. God bless these people, the man. Because the railway workers normally know the route. The, uh, God is everyone's God, man. So God bless these people. He's saying there's another truck around here. Mercy ain't reserved just for Muslims. Just remember that. Christians will have you believe that salvation is only reserved by embracing Jesus. We don't believe that. Mercy is for everyone. That shower probably smelled after Timmy washed off his... Dangerous. These poor kids having to run across highways. See, more. What, what they're doing right now, at the end of it, oh man, their life will have upgraded, inshallah. Even by a bit, it would have upgraded. So protect, God protect these people. Never stops for these kids. Never stops. So someone's on the walkie-talkie. They've stopped us. Oh, for fuck's sake, just let them go, man. Hay immigration, Aji? Si. Si? See? If myself and Timmy get caught by migration, it's not the end of the world. Get kicked out of the country. Yeah. These people get kicked out of the country. They're exactly. The this is why, like, I, 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 I still respect him. I still respect him. But they have a, they have a safety blanket. These YouTubers who come from America, or England, Europe, they have a safety blanket. These people don't have that safety blanket. Yep, yeah, she held it. for themselves and the kids are over. So they're really nervous about what's going to happen. This is the harsh reality of being a migrant trying to get to America. Just push from pillar to post, dodging migration police. Now, now do you guys robbers. understand? Why we don't, why, why we go so hard on this trans people complaining? You get it? Do you understand now? Kaiser, no, Kaiser, Kaiser and me on the same page. Toshi, Vectored, Ryan, freaking Rick. Well, Rick, Rick don't give a shit. It's trans people complaining. When people like this, literally like down south, south of where they live, probably, in, in their country, vamos, vamos. go and do this. Vamos. No, senorita, they couldn't no. give a fuck about what they're complaining loca, about. Eh, loca. <laughs> you would have humanity for these people before you have humanity for privileged people. Okay. Jeez, so now I'm trying to find a way through this scrubland, this bit of, yeah, Mexican jungle. Yeah, but I'm talking about all of there, so all of that, man. Line, without going into the factory. Even the LG, privileged LGB who live here, man. We gotta work our way up to humanity for that. You gotta have humanity for this. Sorry, work our way down. This is more important. Six months. So this guy from Venezuela traveled across the Darien with a baby that is just seven months old. Darien. Been on top of trains, been through the jungle, been here. They have no medicine either. That young, girl, that young girl's life. They have no access to medicine on this journey, guys. If the kid gets ill, they got no access to medicine. Maybe they got pen not penicillin, like paracetamol, basic stuff. They don't have even access to medicine, man. I know a lot of you in America, especially as I've mentioned before, don't like the migrants coming to your country. You see them as a pest and. You think they bring a lot of problems, and okay, maybe. But surely when you see little kids having to cross highways in front of trucks, ride on top of trains and freezing nights, when you see kids have to cross the daddy end, when you see kids getting torn and cut by brambles here in these bushes, surely your heart warms a little bit and you understand their plight a little bit more. Fuck yeah. Um, if you're not don't. touched by what you're seeing, then I don't know. You, you're you a much, it. much colder person than I am. Yeah. You deserve to go to hell. Like I said last stream, if your heart can't go out to these people, you deserve to go to hell, fam. That'll thaw your cold heart out, fam. Nigga, that will thaw your cold fucking heart out in the worst way. So, Baby, I'm going to find a way to get around the outside of that factory. 
Bloody called immigration from before. Come all the way through. Do you call us up? Through the brambles. And up ahead, we can see there's some trains. So, we're almost, almost, I think, at the place we want to get to. You can't even give money to people like this. The Guatemalans, the Venezuelans will just eat your money, eat your contributions to poor people in Venezuela. So there's no way for me to actually give charity to these people. I, I start standing charity to these people. Backward. Señor, por favor. No, es que no puede, por favor. Señor, nosotros caminantes. Caminantes. See, this guy's not. Oh, señor. Tenemos niños. The children with us. The children, fam. No snitch. I just came and said, you got to go back where you came from. you got to get off this property. But fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. We're caminantes. We're heading north. I think he's just going to keep quiet. They do have a heart. These people, these immigration guys, they're, immig they're, pro they're protecting government property in Mexico, right? On the track side here. They got, they, they have a heart, so. Come to this point before, looking for trains. Kids' sweaters, food, discarded nappies, kids' clothes. Oh, look, God, it's the way to Wow. This whole railway line is just... Yeah. Yeah. Been used a thousand times before. The, 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 it's Hola, a waste señor. of time stopping. Ah, immigration here. Immigration. Police. No sabes. Si hay de todo. Everything si hay here. Todo, sí. Hay ladrones también. Thieves. Sí. Ladrones también. Si sí, acaba de entrar una moto ahí. Ahí está la ladrona. Okay. Es peligroso. Si. Sí. You can defend yourself against thieves in, in numbers. There's a lot of women and children here, though. He's saying, well, he's giving us some bad news. There's migration up ahead. He said there's ladrones, thieves around here as well. You need to be careful for that. It's dangerous. Why don't migration deal with the thieves first? Deal with the actual criminals first before dealing with these people. When they have guns, search. Uh, at the train north you have here. to be a such a little man you must be a worm to steal from people like this imagine how much of a worm a pathetic little fucking worm worm on a summer's day in the middle of a fucking baking hot pavement you must be to steal from people like this women and children fucking worm. more fuel for jahannam more fuel for jahannam Or is it migration? Buenas, buenas, buenas. ¿De dónde eres? Venezuela? No. ¿De dónde? Honduras. Honduras. Oh, Honduras. That's why I put this closed caption on the top left, Toshi. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Venezuela. Nicaragua. 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 Colombia. Oh shit. No, Colombia. Internacional en grupo hoy. <laughs> Inglaterra. <laughs> sí. So we found people from Colombia, Nicaragua, England, and Chamos. No, it's not covering that much. It's right in the center. What do you mean? So I don't know what happens next. We just wait, I suppose, like always, just like a caminante. No information. To see what happens. Hopefully a train passes slowly. We can jump on it. What a journey, man. Let's see. This leg of the journey is probably they're probably right that's more dangerous than the Darien. There's still so much risk in well, the Mexican bar. Too fast to jump on. I don't know if we can make it. Yeah, it's too fast. Your your fucking wrist is gonna get snapped off, man. Come on, get on, fam. Go on, Tim, jump on, mate. Come on. Oh, Tim, Come you on, fucking Tim. idiot. Come on to me. Tim, get the get fuck on. on. Jump on. Yes. Well, guys, I'm on the best deal once again. Timmy's down there somewhere. Caminante's all over the place. 
I'm on my own somehow. So, um, yeah. I'll see you when I see you. Oh my god. Adios amigos. Hasta luego. I d Wait. I do want to watch the next part, but it, I might just watch the Bangla one. I might leave the next part for. Well, after a mega journey all the way from South America, myself and Timmy have finally made it to the north of Mexico in the city of Ciudad Juarez. Ciudad. Deep, deep, deep in cartel, cartel. country. Cartel. Let's go and um, look for the border. Oh, Ready? shit. Caminante, Timmy. Oh, we're so close. Very Put close. Way down. Almost there. Let's do it. But what a dodgy city. Can't be any more dodgy than where you came this from. This really is cartel country. I mean, there's just giant jeeps driving around. People eyeing me and Timmy suspiciously on street corners. Okay, look at the old hotel. They probably think he's cartel. Club Verde Hotel. Wow. Love to have stayed there. Probably El Chapo's hangout once upon a time. How is he not being Probably robbed on this there. journey? I'm shocked. So across the border. He ain't being robbed. <laughs> an out. attempt, even an attempt from someone and dumb. These are the back streets, the mean streets of Ciudad Juarez. The chances of, it, of being robbed were high, apparently. Let's avoid the car. I guess they, they, the white man got immunity. <laughs> International incident immunity. And if, if the Sicarios <laughs> don't get you in this town, the manholes will. Yeah. Sicario. If Sicario is fam. Sicario. Sicario. There's the border. There's the border. <laughs> it's exactly how it looks like. Look from like. behind me stands the border wall. The infamous border wall which separates Mexico from the USA. The land that the migrants have been dreaming of seeing on their long journey out. from the south. Pull your passport what out. What awaits them when they cross over, however, into the United States? Well, that can't be predicted. Despite the incredible hardships that they face on their journeys to reach this, this point, well, dreams don't always come true. And they will no doubt have many, many more struggles. Can you slip through the bars? their new lives. We can only wish them well. It looks big enough, but can you slip through? Yeah. Well, this wall also symbolizes the end of my journey uh, up from Venezuela all the way here as a caminante. What's it what a do? journey it's been. It's been incredible. It's been one of the greatest journeys of my life. Most fascinating, the most interesting, the most touching if that's mm. the word to use. What great. I've been happy to share it with my friend. Timmy's sick of it. Timmy Carter. Have you enjoyed the experience? Bro, it's fucking crazy, man. I feel empty now. Empty. But we made it. We made it. We set a goal two and a half months ago. I texted you. Blah, blah, blah. Two and a half months. Thankfully, you agreed. And we made it. Two and a half months. We made it. Um, yeah, uh, a journey like this can't help but change you. Um, but um, no speech from me, no no emotional speech like some bloody YouTubers. We did it, we experienced it, and that's it. Um, listen, don't want more to say. Up to the next one. Yeah. You can't I say nothing. Videos. The experience and, um, talk speaks for itself. Caminantes, por siempre. Por siempre. Caminantes. I don't know why he has to add his little touch <laughs> onto the end. Let's get out of here. Fuck's sake. Yeah, kids can get, definitely get through. Zest, skinny Zest can get through. Timmy Carter. Does Timmy Carter got his own channel? Does Timmy Carter got his own channel? Let me see. Let me see if he's got his own channel. Alright, I'll play that Bangla one in a sec. Wait, uh, let me just check. Oh shit, he does. 290k. V travel vlogging cost me an organ. Darian, okay, he's done the Darian. Joining the hardcore Venezuelan mic, okay. He's been doing his own own version of it lately. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's play this last vid. His latest videos are to do with this journey. Are to do with this journey, but from his perspective, with his camera, so. Dude, I'm feeling empty after that, man. That's like a good anime ending. Actually, I hate even to describe it. It's like watching something amazing and you feel empty at the end of it, man. What a fucking amazing... It's the best documentary that... Uh, that Skyzer sent me. Easily the best I've seen. Okay. Oh. 
Yeah, this is our strange served in Bangladesh. Since I arrived. Oh, okay. This one I may have seen already. This one I may have seen already. The, 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 on top of trains one. I think I actually saw this before and I was complaining to Kaiser that you could die here, man. You could die here. They go, yeah, but they do it every day. <laughs> I remember this one. I've on Let me just double check I've seen this. Oh, okay. I've, I've seen this one, Kaiser. Yep, this is the scene I remember. This chilling um, on the top. To, on he was a bit shook on this one. Up, yeah. stay up. Let's see what okay, I've seen this one, but let me. So let me, uh, because I've seen this one, I'm gonna go to his last cartel vid. Sorry, um, his last vid about this. Um. Yeah, you're well. possible. I remember, yeah, I remember this video. 3.95 million. The yeah, he deserves that. Oh shit. Solo on Bogota's dirtiest streets. Okay, our story. Is this where they just talk about shit? Hey, what about Tia Marzen? Okay, it's just them talking about the trip. Okay, I'll play what guys are saying then. Hey, Atia Marzin, man. You gotta stick around, fam. Let's stick around, comment. I just watched the best documentary of my life, Atia. No joke. The best three videos that will constitute one documentary about migrants coming to America. Fucking amazing. Oh, I'm not even exaggerating, fam. You know me, you watch my content because I don't gas people up. Best documentary I've ever seen. Get zero pound delivery fee on all orders. Uber One, a membership for people who eat food and go places. Not bad. Dialpad AI is your magic crystal ball for sales. It won't pick the winning lottery numbers, but it will predict the right answers. <laughs> Dude, you asked him that before. At is one of my subscribers. Yeah, this is the one. Crazy. We just help two kids. We cannot help everyone. His side, of, his perspective on it was. He must be paranoid the whole trip. Okay. Two weeks after. Bruh. Baby, you okay? Yeah. Looking good, mate. Looking good. A bit stressed, but let's do it. Oh man. You okay? <laughs> you stressed? Yeah, I'm okay. They're empty, man. The last you're empty after that. And why do people embark on this journey? Why is this audio so low? The Darien Gap. His audio is so low. Stretch of land that separates South America from This South is America. the mo most I can put it up. Um, and it's been in the news a lot recently over the last couple of years because it's used now as a migrant path for people mostly from Venezuela, but people also from other parts of the world escaping oppression, dictatorships, poverty, mostly poverty. And they're using this stretch of jungle, which has been off limits to people for many, many decades for various reasons. Um, yeah, and so now it's very much in the headlines. And that's why myself personally, I wanted to explore it. Timmy, when oh, yeah. did you first hear about the Darien Gap? And why did you decide to go there? I first heard about Darien Gap maybe three years ago when I used to work in London. And I had a Venezuelan friend who works in London. Okay. Worked in across this jungle, and she told me that's the world's most dangerous jungle. And actually, her cousin got kidnapped. From kidnapped. The mafia guys. Thankfully, in the end, they let him free. And then again, a year ago, I saw a documentary from a Latino news channel, and I was like, man, I would love to experience it through my own eyes and see how it is. 
and how people feel. So it's really him that put put him up to it. Okay. Why is this jungle so big? And then he followed through. There is no towns, no roads, and no laws. It's basically a jungle that has been owned unofficially by the cartels because they use it as a route to land. And also, there's a, one of the most deadly snakes and, and tarantulas are in this jungle. Tarantulas. The weather. It's completely unpredictable, super wet, and yeah. How do you guys meet? We met through, um, Timmy wrote to me um, about a year ago. He had some problems on YouTube, some other country, and he wrote to me and I responded, and then we kind of developed a bit of an online friendship. Um, and then I posted something on Instagram about visiting the Darien, going through the Darien. It always fascinated me. And about, I would say about five days, literally, before we began our journey, he wrote to me and just said, do you want to go to the Darien? Were you serious when you wrote that before? And I said, yeah, I'd really like to do it. And he said, when can you go? And I said, listen, I've got nothing on now. Let's do it. And he said, I'm ready. And so that's how we did it. We up three days later on the board with Venezuela and Colombia. And we began our incredible journey together. Um, yeah, that's how we met, just through contacting each other on Instagram and then deciding to go on this, this crazy adventure together. And how did you prepare for the trip? <laughs> I mean, I, I chuckle when, when, when you ask that question because there was zero preparation. Um, it's true. I watched a few documentaries. You've ditched most of it anyway. You can't really prepare. Hear about it, but there was zero preparation. I arrived um, in Colombia to meet Timmy, having no idea how we were going to do it, if we were going to do it, if it was possible. Was it a realistic thing to do? Was it? Uh, I had no idea. I'm not yeah, as averse to danger as the people Kaiser makes fun of, but I am somewhat averse to danger. I am somewhat averse to danger. I don't want to, I just don't want to end up dead. I don't care myself, but I don't want to end up dead and my brother being like, why the fuck did you do that? Me and my bro had plenty of arguments about me doing stupid stuff, so. The right clothes. I mean, I went in my bands. I can tell you now, if you're ever going to go through a walk, I wouldn't want to do this now. I would not want to. Uh, yeah, so there was pretty much zero preparation. We met and we said, let's do it and we'll just um, see what happens along the way. And fortunately, um, the fact that we're here now telling our story, everything went okay. But it could have been very, very different. So knowing about the danger and, and watching the documentaries, having a little bit of context about what was it all about, what was your biggest fear about the Biggest danger? fear. We all have a fear of death, a natural instinct to be fearful of death. But for me, it was the way that I could have died because I knew that if something went wrong on our journey, that there was no one going to come and save me. No one, I didn't even tell anyone. I know Timmy is the same. No one knew we were going there. Um, uh -huh. I didn't want to scare my parents or my friends, so I didn't tell anyone I was going there. So I suppose the biggest fear really was having an accident or an injury. Uh, That's true, yeah. Right, the jungle and just knowing that no one was going to come and save me. We were on our own, and um, yeah, we had to somehow find our way out. Having these fears, what pushed you to do it anyways? A whole host of reasons. There's no one answer to that. And if I'm honest, ego. Uh, ego. Wanting to be the first British man to do it. But also, I spent some time in Venezuela earlier in the year and I met people who were planning their journey, the migrants. His ego got killed after this journey, I love that. And it fascinated he admits he went in with the ego, that ego was killed when he did it. Um, and to understand it somewhat more. Um, yeah, so I would say the two things, the ego of can I do this, am I capable, am I strong enough, am I brave enough? And um, yeah, understanding the stories of the other people who did it. Knowing about the danger of the crossing and having this context of documentaries and what you have heard from your friends in Venezuela, uh, Venezuelan friends in London, what was your biggest fear about the trip? My biggest fear before I started the trip. The shits. Diary and the shits. I don't know why. I, I didn't feel scared before the trip. Honestly. I didn't feel any fear before the trip. Honestly, because the only time he felt shook is when he got the shits. <laughs> guy, guy was no more scared than he was when he got the shits. Naiveness. It's bad. I have this naiveness and I think, oh, it's going to be fine. Every time I do something, it's going to be fine. If you trust the people, if you have a smile, you're going to be okay. So yeah, before starting this trip, I had no fear. But to be honest... This was a damn good documentary idea. You need to watch it. I, to come with me, to, with me to this trip. I can send you the three video links. Damn good journey. The biggest travel vlogger in the world. But bro, honestly, I felt the bit It's a one piece, but real. Two people going through the most dangerous place in the world. I'm like, if something happens to him, then I'll die with him. Or if something happens, we are together. Or you do the <laughs> thing, or I do the thing. He was the mafia, guys. <laughs> then you'll be also have in trouble because we are together. So sometimes he was thinking the same thing. <laughs> can be more uh, scary. Did you feel this? He would have ditched him. We died together. Bullshit. You died together. I'm out of here. It's wasted. <laughs>
<laughs> That's why he was up further up on the train. If Timmy hadn't caught that last train, he'd be like, fuck, I'm out of here. <laughs> I understand you. And you're right about when there's two people, it changes the dynamic. And my fear grew when I knew I was going with someone else because I thought to myself, what happens if something happens to the other person? Then you've suddenly got this moral decision to make. Yeah. Do you leave them? Do you stay with them? Do you save yourself? How do you live with yourself afterwards? Like if you had broken your leg, what would I have done? In fact, the truth is we had this conversation in the tent. One night it was deep in the jungle, maybe after three days, and we were passing many bodies and people who just didn't make it through there, people with injuries asking for help that we didn't help. And we said to each other, we said, listen, if one of us gets injured and can't continue, what are we gonna do? And I mean, I think I was the one that said it. And I said, Timmy, I'm sorry, mate, but I'm gonna have to go on. Like, I've yep. got family, I've got friends, I've got my life to live. I can't die with you. And we both came to a decision together, correct? That we were like, yeah, if the other one struggles, can't continue, then like as harsh as it is, and you're trying to help them, like maybe- It's, it's the fair to have that conversation. That in reality, that was just like kind words to like pacify the other person. The reality was that, yeah, the stress of thinking what happens to the other person. I'm sleeping. Uh, do you know why I, the only, I would, you're right, Kaiser, I would. Because the only reason I would is because I know Gio does not have that much, wouldn't have the same care for me that I did. If I, if I know in my heart of hearts, I, I may not leave this guy behind, then I'll try helping him. But then I'll also consider how much does this guy give a shit about me? And I know this motherfucker don't give a shit about me, so I'll be like, fuck you then. Everything Hell yeah, I'd leave his ass behind. I sprained my ankle, and one mistake can cause my life. Not from desire, though. I was talking with Bolt before. If, some, if one of us gets hurt, there's nothing he can do, nothing I can do to help him. There's no loss here. In the middle of the jungle, illegally. If I knew the other person cared for me as much as I cared for them, then I'd maybe stick it out, but nah. You know, that's 100% right. This happened. But that fear to me came later while we were in the jungle. What I said before is like how I was scared. Because you're a vlogger, I'm a vlogger, I'm filming, you're filming. We're both reckless. And maybe you filmed the wrong person, and the guy said, why are you filming? Then we're together. I cannot say, I don't know who's this guy. I'm just a refugee. That was my fear in advance. Maybe I filmed something that I wasn't supposed to film. They come after me. What are you going to do? I don't know, Timmy. We're together. That was yeah. my fear. And then the thing you said. You're in this together, I my sure. ankle in the jungle, and I was in pain. Like Ben said, we had this conversation in the tent, and we agreed. If tomorrow I sprain my under ankle, or I break my leg, or he breaks something, mate, he would have to leave me there, and I would have to leave him there. It's, it heavy, really. it's smart they had this it's conversation the early. And that's the hardest yard of the jungle. And I don't expect You that. could not do that. I'll tell you what. My friend Jiggy and his friend Moose, Moose and Jiggy knew each other. They were younger than us. So even though Moose is my friend, he was Jiggy's friend before. They went on a, a Duke of Edinburgh climb up up to some scottish mountains or something it was like a long i think it was like a week or two week trek up a mountain there to orient there to learn map navigating maps hit their markers and there were groups of people traveling and you had to hit these markers and get there first right that was what duke of Edinburgh was i've done that as well duke of Edinburgh. yeah you know that toshi and he, he's so fat and lazy he he wouldn't dry out his socks his feet like feet were fucked he had like he, he was fucked and i think he even twisted an ankle and all his group was raging at him we have to fucking stop for this fat motherfucker who didn't prepare who didn't powder his feet properly right and they were pissed and it, it broke them they like literally broke their group they didn't have the luxury of saying look we're gonna leave you behind and keep making our way it's hard to sprain the ankle if you're wearing proper boots yeah precisely but one guy can literally fuck your whole group up. So it's good they, they came to this. Um... Look, I, think, I understand from the videos that the mafia took you into the bear at the dairy. Why so and where do you find them? There's no right answer to that. We basically went to Necoclin, which is basically a north east of Colombia town. And there there's lots of people, illegal people, who are actually receiving money from the immigrants and they are in charge of you. You basically trust some random person who is there and tells you, this is the money you need to pay, I will take you through the jungle. Sometimes it's a scam, sometimes they overprice it, sometimes not, but you gotta trust, you gotta trust them. Dude, it's like a gamble, man. There's no blueprint. 
It's like a gamble. That's something about the town of Nicoclean, which is the craziest place I have ever been. There's buses arriving from all different towns in Colombia, full of migrants from all over the world, like Nepalese, Vietnamese, Chinese, and people from different African countries, people from South America. We met Afghanis, we met Syrians, people from war zones all over the world, all trying to find their way from there, because that's the, the head of the trail into the Darien. And to answer the question, no one really knows. You arrive there, you get off the bus, and you try and look for someone from the cartel, or they find you normally and ask you if you want to go across, and you try and negotiate and um, go with someone that you trust, but there's really dodgy guys there, and you can't really trust anyone. They're all promising you, yeah, I'll take you this way, it's the safest way, you won't get robbed, you won't get killed, you won't get this or that, but really you're taking a chance. Uh, yeah. You go then, you've got to trust these guys, you've got to trust someone. And um, yeah, but that felt really dodgy. That town, that town really, really felt dodgy. Like a movie? Yeah, it was like a movie. It really was like a movie. That's fun. This trip, the mafia guy who works for the government somehow gave me and Timmy a bracelet each. This bracelet is so we can join the other Caminantes and be protected yeah. by the cartel. If we went through without this bracelet, there's no chance. Okay, this has been the so best documentary from the cartel, series I've seen. Easily the best. So much humanity in there. So much Darren like is controlled drama. The territory, the Colombian part, is controlled by the cartel, the Gulf cartel, in fact. And no one enters the Darien because they're using the route not only for migrants, which is massive business, but obviously also to He's to win an award for this. Up from South America. So the cartel control it. And so you can't enter without them. There's no way of going in there. They have points where they're guarding it. They're there with guns. And also they're there to protect you. You pay them for a service. They pay you, you pay them. They give you a little wristband, a little piece this of This guy needs to be YouTuber of the, of the year at the game. Panama. The problem is, people think that the cartel is the most dangerous part of the Darien Gap. It's not. The most dangerous part of the Darien Gap is when the cartel leave you, and now you're alone, because the dangerous people yeah. in the Darien Gap are the indigenous people, the people who live in the jungle. Because they, they see rob you. thousands of people passing through each year, and it's like, okay, we know these people have money, we know these people have phones, we know these people have passports, let's rob them. Let's do other horrible things to these people, because if you don't give them what they want, and we heard these stories so many times, people from our group as well, they can kill you. To women, they do horrific. Assaults. I don't even want to go into what we heard in the camp. Um, they'll do terrible things to you if you don't give them what you want. Kidnapping. That was one of the major fears that we had. Once the cartel leave you, uh, many, many people were kidnapped and held for ransom. Had to sell their houses, had to sell their businesses back in Venezuela, back in other countries. That's fucked up. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, the cartel are the least scary part of being in the Darien for sure. Bruh. Bruh. Rape the guy's woman and go. Wait, 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 wait. Those women got mad. They're raping his woman in front of him. Yeah, I'm raping and the guy got mad. He tried to defend her. They shot him. A Haitian family was killed for not speaking. Dude, why don't they firebomb this whole jungle, fam, where these people live? You guys wanted to pass as rations, right? Wanted to look like rations. Why that? Why do we tell the cartel? Yeah, why rations? I was wondering. Are they friendly? Are they friendly with Russians? For the reason Benza said, kidnap it. Kidnap it. British man, British passport, strong passport. Me, I'm Greek, poor country, but still is Europe. So in case either the cartel or the indigenous people were finding our passports, would be over, would be over. So we had to come up with something that will be believable that we're escaping our countries and we're going to go to USA. So because we don't look Latinos, we don't speak perfect Spanish, Ben thought, yeah, let's be Russians that we're escaping the war. So that's the main idea and worked out well. Yeah, good cover, I guess. So how can you pass as a Russian? I mean, what, were, what was the strategy and what were you thinking would work? Yeah, I've been wondering about this for the whole documentary. For um, many, many, many years ago, I developed a fascination for Russia, learned the language, traveled there many times. And so it was just for me, the natural choice, because I thought if by any chance there's another Russian in the group, at least I can pass myself off as a Russian um, by talking Russian. Um, yeah, so that's why Russian just came to my head, obviously my strong connection to Russia. And I mean, there's a slight connection between Russia and Greece, right? Also, I was wondering how these, how these both were going to keep this up. Sense. And the way we did it was just basically by every now and then, although we spoke English together most of the time to communicate, yeah. 
Um, I would throw in a few words of Russian, or when I fell over or twisted my ankle, I would swear in Russian, um, just, just to try and give a slight impression. I didn't do a very good job at it, to be honest, because you do talk to a natural language. But um, yeah, I would just try and do things in a Russian way, kind of thing. I'd say, ah, oh, bloody Putin, um, just to try and like, let them hear that word. Or I would say, oh, I'm a long way from Moscow, and let them hear the word, just to give like a, yeah, a slight impression to the people around me. Because they did suspect at times that we weren't who we said we were. We were the only people filming. Um, and so I don't know if saying we were Russian saved our lives, but maybe maybe it helped us along on the journey, made it slightly smoother than it They was. don't want Putin getting revenge for an international crisis. Because <laughs> he was speaking a lot of English, I found a lot of people. Oh, man. When he got the shits. <laughs> so, day two, inside the Guardian, we keep walking, still uh, with a cartel. It was like cartel in front, cartel in the back of the group, and cartel in the middle. All people armed, machetes, crazy. And at some point, we made a little stop for, for water. And then I decided, ah, let's make a little video here. It's only for two seconds. So I'm pulling out my, my phone, make a little b-roll, and I hear a voice, still stuck with me, like a trauma. Russo! Russo! Come here, ven acá! I'm freezing. Are you convinced? There's a mafia guy. With a scar, like a movie, with a scar in his face, probably a machete or something attack, telling me to come closer to him. So I go there, trying to pretend I'm confident, I wasn't. So I go there, and the guy says, who are you? I says, I'm Russian. Why are you here? I'm like, I'm escaping, I'm escaping the war. So why don't you fly directly from Russia to Mexico? Why do you have to go through Darien Gap? What's your reason? You're, you're, from, you're in Europe. You're not a Venezolano, you're not an Afghani. And me, I freeze cold. Bruh. I don't know what to say. I was just staring at him and saying, Putin, Putin, I cannot go, escaping the world. And all of a sudden, like... You know what's mind. weird? Those cartel guys have probably rarely or never seen a Russian before. So they don't really able to tell if this guy's... I, I, I think me, Kaiser, you would be able to see if someone's putting on a fake Russian accent, right? You've seen enough people put on a fake Russian accent to know that it's not authentic Russian. But these cartel guys probably even le know even less about what a Russian is or... Like... A Venezuelan guy who's a bit crazy, I knew from the day before, came angrily to this mafia guy saying, Why are you shouting? Why are you shouting? You don't know what Putin is? He's a dictator. Why do you think they're escaping the war? Of course you have to go through the Aryan Gap. And then this guy, the mafia guy, like, okay, okay, whatever. And then immediately I left. And from that time... Why do they the care? So for the Why do they care? They get fucking money. Cartel beggars can't be choosing. What the hell? Hours, every step I was doing, I was feeling scared. Because after that, after I left, the guy said to the other mafia guys, Ojo a los rusos. Which means... Pay attention I'm to those the Russian two. guys. They marked us. So I was thinking... He mentioned this in the doc here. Ben was clueless. Keep an eye on those two. Nice gap. So I felt so scared, <laughs> so scared. That was my scariest moment of the whole trip. Yeah, it, uh, to be honest, he did he did expose that. He said like, he's been really scared because his, Span his Spanish is better than mine. So he understands what they're saying. And he heard that say, keep an eye on these two. So he, he did admit that on camera. The temperature. Hmm? Yeah, this is the part. Keep an eye on those two. So Ben, what was your scariest moment? Yeah, um, Timmy had more scary moments than me, I think, just because he speaks Spanish much, much better than me. So I was so oblivious to much of the stuff that was going on. Um, just to return to Timmy's point, the scary thing was about them keeping an eye on us and with us faking being Russian, the dangerous thing was in our bags, we had our passports, British, Greek. So they can demand to open your bag at any time. And if they'd opened our bags and wait there, these two Russian guys got a British passport, he got a Greek passport. It just, I don't know how we would have talked our way out of that. So I can understand Timmy's fear with that. For me, my scariest moment, we were warned constantly. Oh, Kaiser, what story would you make up if you were in this pickle, if you were in this pickle, you, you've got an American passport, I've got a British passport. What story would we come up with? Could have told them they were fake. Yeah, true. That's what I was just about to ask. What nationality would, could we say we, we were? Yeah, we could say it's fake, but then they would be like... Hmm. They could probably tell a fake, considering what, what line of work they're in. Of you, the people are going to kill you, kidnap you, do whatever else you are the indigenous people. We brown. Um, and indigenous people in the Darien, they have their own language. And Mo one morning Indian. about three o'clock, pitch black. I'm lying in the tent in my underpants, feeling vulnerable. I'm in the middle of the jungle. I have no idea mm -hmm. where I am, how many more days I've got to go. Suddenly this group 
of people, of men, came and arrived and they were setting up tents next to us and they were speaking a language that sounded so prehistoric and old and just, I didn't recognise it and I started freaking out. And I was half outside the tent because we had a small child's tent, so I was too big to have my legs inside the tent. And these people were there next to us and they were blah, 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 in this strange language I'd never heard before. And I said to Timmy, Zip, I think Brit or American, they think hide white. Faces, yeah. hide the fact that we're gringos and we've got white skin. I was terrified. And only, because I thought we were going to get robbed or something. I could speak Hindi with and then Kaiser. I more and I calmed down. I started we could speak Hindi with each other easily. Some parts of the Even with my broken words Urdu and, and, and words I recognize, I uh, understanding Hindi, I could, we could do it. Nepalese migrants, there's about 50 of them, Nepalese migrants, they're all talking together in this jumble of words I didn't understand. But I was like, immediately I calmed down. And I was like, oh, thank God, these are just other migrants I passed. They're not the indigenous. But that moment for maybe like two or three minutes or five minutes was absolutely terrifying by far the scariest moment, definitely the Darien, and quite possibly of my entire life. You mentioned the passport. What else did you take with you? I mean, listen, zero preparation. I took my backpack. I took a change of underwear, a change of socks. Tin socks. We took hardly any food. The, there was this one guy we met in the bus station in Medellin before we went. And, uh, Medellin. We met him again in Neococli in the town with all the migrants. And in the morning when we told him we were going to cross the Darien, so he said, okay, you need to buy some food. We never even thought of the concept that we needed to buy food. We had no tent, we had no sleeping bag, we had nothing. And so he took us to the shop, like children. Okay, you need to buy tuna, you need to buy crackers. So we bought food, but we only bought enough for two days because the guides, the cartel lied to us and said, it's a two day journey. Um, and we went to the tent shop. He said, yeah, they had very little food. We'll just sleep outside the jungle. Or I was shocked that we, we didn't see them lose weight, that, that much weight as well. Food and stuff. Just totally unprepared. Like, you would have noticed two and a half months they lost um, weight. It was a one-man tent. And they said, are you sure you want a one-man tent? Because we had two-man tents. And it was an extra $12 for a two-man tent. Nine. And I, $9. And me, being as tight as I am, said, no, Timmy, we'll be all right. It's only two days. We'll squeeze into this tent. Um, so basically, we had food for two days. We had a tent that was too small for us. We had yeah. nothing else that we could use that would service us in the jungle. We were so unprepared. Um, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that we managed to go into the Darien and come out of it in one piece. The so thing is, you can't there. be too prepared for this. Considering how much people had to ditch for that Darien, sorry, the Darien trek, and how much you have to ditch because you, you're in a rush to get on trains that are moving, you, you can't be too prepared for things like this. You have to have the bare essentials. We had no medicine, we had nothing. So um, yeah, what else did we take with us? Nothing but um, yeah, just a, a change of underpants, a change of socks, and a little bit of tuna. Tuna. Get yeah. zero pound delivery fee on all orders. My bro would love, love Remember hearing that. Eat food and My bro places. swears by t t tinned tuna on his, on his like, on gym flex. Fucking tinned tuna. <laughs> hey, no, so this one is really, really important on the side. Protein and tin tuna, that's what my bro lives on. As a YouTuber, what do you bring to film? And, and then Tim is going to respond to the same question. Like to film, as a YouTuber, yeah. to, to cover his journey, yeah. what did you take with you? I brought with me the journey. Everything that I always yeah, don't need to heat it up, yeah. can be fit into a little box this big, which is a very small Sony camera. It's about that big. It's like a, a GoPro, I suppose most people GoPro, yeah. Um, some batteries, and I had my telephone. I realized almost immediately I couldn't use my little Sony because it would make me stand out as being something different than a Russian escaping the war. So I filmed the entire journey from when we got into the jungle um, and met the cartel for the first time. I filmed everything on my telephone. Um, yeah, fortunately I had a power bank so I could charge my phone. But that's all, power I, bank, nice. that's all I ever bring as a YouTuber. So the bare minimum uh, required to um, film a video. Okay, so everything Ben said is absolutely true. We are completely reckless. I would say even idiots. Idiots, not even think about the worst case scenario, nothing. So yeah, we went with barely no food, a little bit of water. And I want to say here a story. I don't know if you remember this, you might remember it. Guys, I don't know, day four, or I don't remember, I think day four was it. I had no water, zero water. You had no water. Our no Venezuelan wa friends also had no oh, water. Oh, no wonder you got the shit. And at some point, we found this couple. They weren't walking. They were just standing there. And the husband you said drink to, from me, anywhere. to my friends, do you guys have some water for my wife? She feels terrible. And I personally had no water. So we all said no. And then we found out, once we went to the camp, that this lady never made it. Wow. And the reason was, wasn't because she didn't have water, the reason was because she drank water from the river. And the oh. river in Darin jungle is super contaminated because of the trash and the dead bodies. So it, you cannot drink this water. She did because she was desperate and she passed away. Fuck. That was a crazy story. You remember it? Yeah, very well. Very well. Yeah. That's the only water I have. Nothing else. 
and we have no food, zero food, just water. This guy in place like this. lost daughter, mother, and sister, and he has probably the saddest story I've ever heard of Darian. Man, to be honest, bro, we were less prepared than the poorest immigrant. And that's not a joke, because we spoke with many immigrants. It's true. And all of them, they have friends that are doing this trip, they're watching TikToks. I personally even lied to Ben. I tell to Ben in advance, hey bro, I've made my research. I know the route had to go Darien Gap. Guys, I had no clue, I just want to convince him. Oh shit. <laughs> so that's true, so guys. kind of figured I'm out. And yeah. Yeah, this is, um, I don't know, maybe because you see a professionally edited video, semi-professionally edited video at the end, you kind of presume that everything was prepared, we have all these cameras and all this kind of stuff, and, but honestly, hardly anything. Didn't think, didn't even think about bringing- This is where the footage speaks for itself. Even a, even a, uh, like a, like a moderately decent edit person, like even someone who can just do average, basically people like Vector, Toshi, me, you, basic editing. The footage speaks for itself. You just pick what is, it impacts the, the viewer, what's relevant, put it together. A vlog is not hard to make when the footage speaks for itself. It really isn't. Vlogging is so popular on YouTube. The, 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 f the real life footage speaks for itself. Um, just zero preparation, as Timmy has said numerous times, totally reckless, totally unprepared, just took it as an adventure as much as anything. But um, yeah, somehow we made it through, but we didn't really deserve to. And as Timmy also said, we were the least prepared people. People can believe it. When they saw my shoes, they saw me in vans. They're like, what you, why didn't you wear hiking boots? We're all in hiking boots, we're in Wellington boots for, for the water. And um, we didn't have mosquito repellent, we didn't have sun cream, nothing. It's so stupid what we did. And um, I hope, I hope, I hope, if anyone else- They locked out so to, bad. Um, to do something like we did. And I don't recommend it in the slightest. I really think what we did was stupid and reckless. But if ever you do, plan it, prepare for it, and um, yeah, get yourself safely across. Because we made it across by the skin of our teeth, really. It's, um, we didn't yeah, but you don't know how much, how you would have had to ditch. What did you learn from the immigrants that are crossing the Daring Channel? What did I learn? Oh man, you know what I learned? I learned how a parent can love their child. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. A lot of people will criticize the migrants for bringing their children through the jungle. They say, how can you take your child through such a, such a place? But the love that I saw, the care that I saw, I saw an Afghan man. Afghan. His baby for four days. We were with him for four days, climbing up rocky slopes, protecting this baby. The baby- Afghan hype. Eight months old, something like Afghan, that. my brothers. Um, and just to see the love and the dedication to their kids to get them safely through this journey was, um, that was inspirational. Um, that was something that really made me emotional when I saw that, because I was there kind of, you know, I didn't have to be there. I was doing it in part, you know, just a challenge for myself, but to see how they wanted to make this journey for their family. The human side of you has to go out. To love a child, what it is to love your family and to do anything and to get them. And it was the men who were protecting their families mainly. You don't need yeah, fucking anime to t t tell you that. These fucking autistic weebs need anime to tell them of the power of friendship and the power of family and the power of bonds, unbroken bonds, Naruto, unbroken bonds, Xbox 360. You don't need fucking anime. You just need to look like this guy saw real people. It's so nice to bump into people that we met on the road because some of them we thought might not make it, but we made connections on the journey, different people. Oh, she knows that reference. An hour or two or three, sometimes for a whole day. And to see them here, that they made it is just amazing. And um, yeah, it fills you with, um, oh, Nata. Oh look. I, I was wondering why he wasn't emotional. emotional. Yeah, look, see? It fills you with emotion. I was, I was shocked that he caught himself at his best. But you know he must have broke down on that trip. Seeing so much inhumanity and so much love and care, like love it. What a don, what a respect this guy. Dude, I am subbing to this guy. I am subbing to this guy. Yeah today what did you learn from them what a fucking don this situation their situation that's a good one man i don't know how to explain it but i realized that desperation sometimes in life can be the biggest strength meaning that these people had nothing else to do i wouldn't know what no to say he's got only nearly four million goal. subs probably won't even see the comment they have nothing back home so they will do everything in order to go to USA. And that makes them extremely strong and also faithful. All of them have but, but this is my point, Atia. Vlogging's huge on YouTube. Vlogging's huge. And it's, it's, it's only until you see one 
really good one that you realize holy shit man like your heart goes out to these people people that your media or twitter or facebook is constantly vilifying constantly vilifying i don't even think that the god the footage of gaza of kids dying is enough i think if someone made a doc documentary like this for uh, gaza or someone made it for syria or made it for we're in anywhere anywhere yemen or whatever people's hearts would go out like Every time we ask about them, you, are you scared? Are you scared? Are you worried? No. Dios primero, Dios primero, Dios primero. But uh, people consume their morality through fucking anime. Like, it's Western Peace vlogging their own dumb lives. It's pointless. Or TikTokers, yeah. That God will help them go through that end, go through immigration in Mexico, and they will make it. Faith. I think if you're not that desperate, you, you can never be as strong as you can. I don't know if you understand. I don't know. Do That's I exactly that? what I've been saying. Does that make sense? No person would make this heroic fucking journey. If they weren't so desperate, so desperate. When you have nothing, you can do things that you would have never imagined if you had many things in life. That's what I realized. And I have so much respect for these people. And like ben respect, said. nothing less than respect. See the same words that when your heart goes out, you're all on the same page. He was there. He was living it. You can have nothing less than respect for these people. The love for the families that they have, it's, it's insane. And even the babies. I never hear a baby crying. Never. Like you see in the Western world countries, a baby didn't get an ice cream. We never saw a kid crying yeah. in the dark. Autistic fit. My pad, my pad. This is what I say. You never see a Western kid do that. You never see a, so you never see these kids do that. They're smiling all on their faces. Getting bombed, 4,000 getting bombed in Gaza. But these people making a harsh trek like this, smiling happy. You know what I mean? Adversity, fam. Marian gap for five days. Never. All of them quietly keep walking, keep walking, and with no food, no water. And they still made it. And that was uh, insane to witness it in real life. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right. <clears throat> hey! Yeah, well. Uh, video game, video game, game, CG, PSVR, virtual reality, thoughts, waifus, fuck off. Yep. How do you fuck feel you. when you completed the journey? Fuck you. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the overwhelming feeling when you finish that journey is one of relief. Um, and it wasn't a sense of satisfaction. I've done it. No, not at all. It was more, I need food. I need water. I need to change my shoes. It was just physical things. Your body is destroyed after you're walking through rivers for days. 10 30 p.m. Um, uh, Timmy sprained his ankles. You're exhausted. I mean, I aged probably 10 years. I look at video from the end of the trip, from the beginning of the trip. I'm like an old man. I lost about 10 kilos in weight. For me, it was just relief. Yeah, you're looking much fresher. Rest, yeah. To have some you look really water, old. To drink some fresh, clean water. To have like things that you take for granted at home, a Coke. You know, just have a tin of Coke. Was it tasted so good? I can't describe when we discovered this shop in this village and I had the first Coke. It was amazing. I was dreaming of a, of a cheeseburger for the entire journey. Just when will I see him? It tastes better when you've been McDonald's deprived McDonald's of it. That's what fasting, you know, it's in fasting. Like when Ramazan comes. Things taste so much nicer when you break your fast. Not relief that was alive even. It makes you value and cherish everything you have when you're deprived of it. And it was over. And I could just, um, yeah, I could start to rebuild myself from the journey. How do you feel when you complete it? Oh, mate, relief. The moment I entered to the first uh, little indigenous village, ran into the first shop, por favor, señor, gatorate, gatorate, which is Gatorade. Gatorade, I never yeah. got this Gatorade, lemon. Gatorade. Lemon, remember the, Gatorade. The and I chunk it in seconds. Electrolytes, in huh? seconds. And I had the second one. The third one I gave it to a caminante. So, yeah. But there was no, like, thing. you don't think anything. You just feel relief. I'm alive. I made it. That's basically it. Okay. What is the one memory you remember forever from the journey? Oh man, that's a terrible one, guys. Um, as we said, in the Daring Gap, many people eventually don't make it because <laughs> they die. And they die from different reasons. They can die usually from the river, because the river is very strong, and people don't know how to swim, they get stressed, and they get drawn. And many times, people get shot from the indigenous. And that's why they die. And I personally saw 9, 10, or 11 bodies <laughs> on my way. Way more than I thought. A mother and a child. That was the worst one. I will never forget that. Mother so the bodies were fresh. And I could still see they were Chinese. Little baby. That, that Chinese. Even now talking about it feels, feels weird. Because it's something that I saw, like the movies. It was terrible. Ben will tell you things he saw as well. So obviously, um, I remember the bodies as well. Just the death. Oh, I tell you. Unless you've smelt 
a dead body. You don't know what stink is. It's unbelievable. You smell death before you see death, a long way off. You're walking through and you start to smell it, get stronger and stronger, and you see people up ahead, they're pointing in the bushes, they're pointing in the river, because you know, okay, there's a body or there's two bodies. I saw three bodies together just washed up on the shore. But that isn't what sticks with me the most. I met a young Venezuelan girl, she was called um, Claudia. Claudia. Probably nine or ten, and she was terrified of water. And the thing is, in the Darien, it's traversed by many different rivers, and you have to cross these rivers. And she was terrified of water, and some of the rivers were really deep. Um, and every time she came to a river, she held her mum's hand, but she'd always shout out, Russo, Russo, because everyone was calling us Russo on the trip. And she'd say, Russo, Russo, por favor. And then I'd run up ahead, like in the trail of people, and I'd take her hand with her mum, and we'd wade through the river. Sometimes I'd put her on my shoulder if it was too deep. And um, yeah, she was such a sweet little girl. And I just remember her, the, the, the fear that she had of the water, and just calling out my name as if like I was some kind of, I don't know, I felt like some kind of hero, to be honest, just because each time, yeah, like she just relied on me so much and carried her across. And then we didn't see her for a few days in the trail, we didn't see her. And we found her in a refugee camp um, at the end of the trip. And it was such an emotional meeting again. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, just to see her, that she'd made it and she'd gotten over her fears of crossing the rivers and she made it and she was going to continue her journey up to North America. Yeah, that was the, um, that person. Dude, um, when you test it like this, it builds character, the man. And the thing and the, um, the memory that I take away from the, um, my trip across the Darien. When you test it like this, it builds character. But people in America, Europe have no character because they've not been tested. Think about it. Look at the character of people now. Comfort does not build character. I don't subscribe to the conservative quote that hard times build character. No, it's not about hard times. It's being tested like this in small ways or big ways. What is the friendship like with each other after the journey? Ah, uh, listen, you know, I'll be honest with you, like if you're 60 days with someone, especially in a stressful environment, you would think there would be arguments and stuff and um, falling out. And we were literally, we've been together what for the last 60 days and five very, very difficult days in the Darien. I can tell you the truth. Um, I've never had an argument. I've never had, we've never had a falling out in any way whatsoever. Timmy is the most, one of the most genuine guys I've met. And um, he's taught me things, Timmy, although he's younger than me. He's taught me how to be a bit of a better human being. So I saw him do things in the jungle uh, that I didn't do. He carried many more children than I did. He helped many more people than I did. I realized I'm a much more selfish person than Timmy. I we never got to see that. And um, I think and I hope that our friendship, why are you laughing? <laughs> it's true what I'm saying. He looked like the hero of his vlog. He looked like the hero of Tim Timmy. <laughs> Timmy looked like the guy whining because he had the shits <laughs> on his vlog. <laughs> See how a narrative can be painted through a mission. It's not about you spinning the narrative. It's simply through a mission. Sometimes the narrative can be painted. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I might, I'm, I might do Timmy's side next stream. I might, I'm, when I next stream, maybe Saturday, tomorrow, I might do Timmy's side. See, because it sounds like he was the real hero. Timmy was the real fucking hero. Um, I think our friendship will continue. I, I, I want to see what he did after he got the shits. When Timmy got the shits and his journey to the um, the commandantes on the train train parts, those. Tim, I'm always happy, always willing to meet up in the future and uh, do a trip. It'll be a pleasure, mate, to do a trip with you. Easier one, por favor. Más fácil. If this was Timmy's idea, guys, this wasn't his idea. This was uh, Timmy's idea. First of all, I've never heard Ben saying exactly things about me. Um, bro, listen, for me, um, before I started YouTube, my travel vlogs, I literally watched five minutes of Bolton Bank Bankrupt, who is the number one travel vlogger in the world, in my opinion, and he inspired me to start doing these videos. So if you guys... If these you want are to like inspiring videos, videos. Of Senor Calvo. So I'm glad I met him. Are you inspired? He's an amazing human being. He's even funnier and more humble and more fun in real life than in his videos. I consider him, I consider him as a friend. But he lied. We had an argument, a big one argument. Okay, what's this argument? I think it was day four in the jungle. And me, I was just doing my own thing, listening to reggaeton. We just stopped, have, we just stopped our trek. Reggaeton. We had no food, we had no water. And Ben, on his own, started setting up the tent. Me, lazy, smoking cigarette, listening to reggaeton, making noises, while everyone is tired and destroyed from the jungle. Ben setting up the tent, built the tent on his own, me doing nothing. And then, I decided to stand up. And I step on the tent, and the tent almost breaks. Oh. And this is where the breakdown of Ben came out. He said, for fuck's sake, Timmy! Out of nowhere, from zero to 100. Me, not saying nothing, because I know I fucked it up. And there was a silence in the environment. None of the Venezuelans spoke, and they started laughing, because they saw the Russian guy screaming to me. And then me, I started laughing, he started laughing. So I think that was our one breakdown. <laughs> Dude, they got such great chemistry, these guys. That's a brotherhood right there. That's a shared adversity. 
experience of shared adversity. Oh. Go easy, Man, best personality. I love his humility, guys. He's super humble and super generous. Even that the video you saw from Darien, he gave me many of his shots, beatles. There is almost zero unhealthy competition of vibes. Good guy, so man. Ben's a good guy. That helps me improve and helps him. Look at his face. Learn to look uh, at people's eyes yeah, and their faces. Him. You can tell a sociopath from a real human being. Own, I will tell you more things about him. But next to him, look uh, them in the eye when he watches videos. Now, what does he like about him? Easy to say. Uh, in real life, he's amazing until he gets slightly sick. If, he sta if Ben starts sneezing, he thinks, I'm dying. That's it. <laughs> I got yellow fever. <laughs> what, about you? what about so you? What about you? For me, that was hilarious to see. It's not even annoying. I'm joking. It's not annoying, but that's his... See, I need to fly back to UK. He has that luxury. Yeah, I mean, other people don't. <laughs> yeah, annoying thing. He's overthinking that he's going to die because he lost a toe or he got a little bit sick. So, yeah, it's not annoying. It's just funny to me. But, yeah, nothing Which is ironic to because about he painted Timmy as the, the whiner with the shits. I was like, fuck, I can't be bothered to go. <laughs> We're getting the behind the scenes, guys. But I only know him for 60 days, so we don't know. <laughs> now what do you think about me? We both know the answer, what's the worst thing about me. But better if he says it. <laughs> I've waited. Yeah, okay. There's only one thing that, if I'm honest, about Timmy that I would tone down um, in his personality. And that is, I've never met a person who talks as much as Timmy Carter. He does not stop. As soon as he wakes up, it's non-stop talking. And you know, you're exhausted in the jungle, your toenails are falling off, you've got Love, no These guys need to do a co-op channel. Everywhere and you're terrified. These two need to trap. These guys need to form their oh own. Please. Don't let me agree, Ben. Exactly, yeah, thank you. Clarkson, <laughs> May and Hammond. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, he's, um, he's a chatterbox, let's say that. Clarkson, May and Hammond, they need to form their own. Let's finish, it's the end. Yeah. Let's finish with the question to them. Having that British banter as well is jokes. Oh, Jim. I look like yeah, that's what you said. That you said I was. You sound like a great travel blogger. So that's good enough. Yeah. I'll take that. The world. Yeah, I'll take. I'll take. The difference in size of their channels I'd is humongous. Question back at you, if I can, and, or the audience. Um, what you thought of Timmy? Um, because <laughs> sometimes the audience can be. They take people in different ways. Um, so I'd like to ask you. Uh, would you like to see me travel? with Timmy Carter. One yeah, fuck again? yeah, Once man. Enough. I don't know. Maybe you can. Uh, maybe you can leave a comment. Fuck yeah. Well, mate. I think that is the end of... It needs to be equally uh, dangerous, though. Uh, been emotional. Finito la musica, pasato la fiesta. Okay, let's get out of here. This guy looks like he's ready to just go home to his creature comforts. <laughs> it's true that no one would want to do this again. Let alone the first time. Mate, why are you fucking lying? No, what? You hate me, you don't like me. Yeah, you're a prick, but... You look fucking <laughs> humble in the video. Yeah, on the film, I've got to make myself look good. All right, mate, hey. Fuck, man, that was the last video we ever made together. 100% man, it's okay. That was terrible. Yeah. That was terrible. Timmy's an experience. Hi, Oh, so they got someone else to direct and edit. The ammo reggaeton. Oh, sorry, this is, a, this is a documentary about them. Okay, I see. Ben and Timmy. You can officially, guys, say we've made it. Darien Dunkey, Panama, Nightmare Experience is over. Lo logramos, cabrón. This is the worst night of my life, right? I've had bad bus rides in my life. Not really bad this. Terrible, mate. But with love, always. How much do you think this journey cost him, Kaiser? This whole journey. Yeah, how much do you think it cost him? Eight dollars. It's a 90, 90 day journey they did from Venezuela border right to the Mexican border. I've been robbed by some kids. Oh my god. Ah, oh, there is Adi. Little Adi. What are you doing? Love it, man. Yeah, plane ticket to Colombia. He said they took a thousand dollars as spending money. That was brilliant. That was fucking brilliant. I'm next time, maybe tomorrow, I'll do the Timmy side of it. Timmy, let me just double check how long his videos are. If they're not long. Most of it went to br bribes, yeah. Food and everything's dead cheap. 
Okay, um... Oh, he lost an organ as well. Um, okay, he has... Okay, he... Cuba, you did... Okay, that's Cuba. Fast and Furious, Medellin's gone wrong. Um... Okay, he's, he's only done uh, two videos, and they're an hour each. He's done two videos in an hour each. Room. Hey, my messages that really, really helped me, honestly, me reading. Okay, okay, yeah, he did two videos, just under an hour, hour long each, okay. He didn't seem to do the, f the Mexican part of it. Cuba, oh, most of his stuff is all Cuba, 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 captured by Cuban girls, he's a young dude, so he's all about checking the chicks out, most of his thumbnails have got like, got like big booty Latinas and shit like, <laughs> yeah, I'll watch them both next stream, <clears throat> I can do both of them in the next, in next stream, nice guys, brilliant, best documentary I've seen, not only is it the best documentary Kaiser sent me, it's easily one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. It doesn't have the glam and the glitz. It's just got raw, unedited, almost unedited, but it's showing how it is. Timmy Carter, he's on 290k subs, 358 videos. He's small, he, he's relatively small. <clears throat> he's got the 100k badge, 100k... Uh, trophy from youtube so that's good greek guy addicted to reggaeton and latinum oh he loves latinos he's obsessed with latino girls that's what it's about i think it's it's more like his vlogs end up being incidental because he just loves latino <laughs> latin booty shit nah what a respect respect to him though weak snob <laughs> he's just snogging a bunch of women like all his thumbs are like big booty latinos brazilian girls Cuban girl. <laughs> legend let me just quickly bring up his um the page hold on yeah He's always got some Latin, <laughs> they all want a seed for that passport, yeah, that Greek passport. Greek is still better off, yeah, they look. It's all about <laughs> him snogging Latino girls. <laughs> Timmy Carter related to Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Damn, he was really, looked really young in that one. He's always got a woman in this thumbnail. He gets uh, these girls drive him around and get him like the links and stuff. Bloody yeah. The, yeah. So his 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 um collaboration with Bolden Bolden bankrupt definitely is gonna shoot him up. Definitely gonna shoot him up. He's got like six hundred nineteen k views, three hundred ninety four. Yeah, he does that much anyway. Nice. Nice. Hold him behavior. Yeah, he's young. He's young and he's semi inexperienced. He's not like your boy, um, ball and bankrupt, Ben. So. Greatness. All right, guys, I'm going to. I'm going to end it here. I'm, this is going to go up as another video. No point me doing anything else like playing a video game. Brilliant. Thank you, Kaiser Man, for recommending this this video. Such an amazing video. Ben is 50, Timmy is 30. Yeah. Such a great fucking journey. Ah, sorry, Toshi. I gotta upload this on YouTube. Gotta gotta share this with people. Gotta share this. At least the the, the expe like think about it. There are people who wouldn't watch these. You would not have watched this documentary if I wasn't reacting to it. I'm not taking no credit because that is this is all his content. This is all other people's content. But you would not have watched that documentary if I wasn't sitting here re reacting to it, sharing this experience with you. So 
it's valuable, you know what I mean? Instead of watching me react to fucking shitty anime, better to have this shared experience. Tashi got the old world to watch. Yeah, he's got the old world. <laughs> Mega long. D&D, yeah, D&D. <laughs> oh, man. I wanted to do the Timmy side of shit. Okay, I'll fuck it. I'll, I'll do D&D. Sunday, maybe I'll do this one then. Fuck's sake, man. I don't know if three hours D&D or two hours of watching Timmy's side of this. I, I really enjoy the experience of D&D, but I'm not, I'm not like Rick level, Rick level obsessed with it. You know what I mean? Or Vector level obsessed with it. No, 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 I didn't forget. I know D&D's there. I just got carried away. That's all. Sunday, I'll probably do the Timmy stuff then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Damn, that's a good docu, man. I think more people need to watch it, man. They need to grow humanity. The MCAS, we ain't been tested like these people. I love these people. They've been tested, man. When, you, when you're tested hard, the requirements for you to enter Jannah are so low. We're so lucky, we're born Muslim. We live in Western country. We have creature comforts. You know what I mean? The requirements for us to enter are gonna be high, fam. Then watch Godzilla. More in doing, doing chin, that share it, more in chin ups, yeah. I feel empty after finishing that documentary. I can't imagine how empty they feel. Going back to their, their vapid, mundane Western lives. Big booty Latinas and autistic kids complaining about uh, fucking QAnon and, and uh, Balenciaga and complaining about Alex Jones coming back on Twitter. We ain't living life, man. Are we supposed to? We ain't living life like we're supposed to, fam. We need wide open countrysides, big horizons. Waterfalls. We need nature. We ain't living life. I was telling Zess, we living in concrete coffins and high rises, man. Nothing. He's doubled down ever since he came back on Twitter. He's going hard because he's got Elon support now. He's got Elon support now. Now he'll get away with saying any old shit as long as it's not saying that uh, a mass shooting is fake. Anything below a mass shooting or terrorist attack is fake, he'll just get away with saying that. More with the motivation to cut down the jungle gun. <laughs> it'll still make me feel empty. But I'll, I'll, I need to do outside of winter. It's too, it's just too dark. It gets too dark too quickly. I'm, I'm active nocturnal, you know what I mean? So I could, if, even if it's like 4 p.m., it's not dark. So I get that done. Spring. Build a waterfall in your <laughs> I know I know we can't have a waterfall everywhere, Ryan. But I saw uh, Zess has Zess has been sharing pictures of the Bangla village, the Bangladeshi village that he's visiting. And I even even just seeing a little snapshot into Bangla villages. I've seen Pakistani villages like that. I mi I miss I miss places like that, man. Your soul feels at ease. It feels at peace. Think about it. You simply look at an image of these places. Your soul feels at peace. And imagine being at, being at these places. You're not anxious. You just want to be there in the moment. You know what I mean? You don't want to come back. I used to cry every time I came back from Pakistan. Legit. When, when I used to go on holiday up till when I was 15 years old, we used to go with our mum. I used to cry every time I came back from Pakistan. We would be there for about three, maybe four weeks. I would cry. Like your soul needs to be in places like that. Coming back to the concrete, grey skies, you, you don't feel right, you know what I mean? People ain't meant to be between concrete walls 24-7, yeah. Even our outdoors aren't any better, you know what I mean? We just got concrete, cars, trucks, poor architecture, fucking global, globalization bullshit. The, glo the globalization is just a fancy word for everywhere looking the same as everywhere else. That's what globalization is. You wanna have, you wanna walk out and see the same Starbucks, McDonald's, burgers everywhere. 
Jonas everywhere looking like everywhere else. That's what globalization is. It's a, it has a physical impact. It's not about convenience. They, they sell it to globalization through convenience. Oh, you can get this, you can get that, that you never got you. But no. It's all about buying up property everywhere, make it look like everywhere else. It's like Mac McDonald's. McDonald's is in the real estate game. They ain't the restaurant game, fam. Mackie D's ain't in the restaurant game. They in the real estate game. Let's think in it, dudes. Alright, guys, I'm gonna end it. Thank you, Vector, Kaiser. Kaiser, particularly MCAS, Ryan, Atia Marzen, Lurkers. No doubt, Yvette's probably lurking. <laughs> when MCAS arrives, Yvette's usually lurking. Much I know. <laughs> Simo, anyone else lurking? Thank you. Thank you for sharing this fucking great experience. Go watch this. I don't usually say this. I don't usually say this. But I beg you, please go watch this documentary. I'll link it when, when it goes up on YouTube. When my react goes on YouTube, I'll link all the links in order. If you haven't, didn't have time to catch it or you're in and out like a fucking autistic fuck. And you didn't watch them, please, I beg you watch them. It's so good. Yeah, pl I like, believe me, I never say this. I never go out on a limb. It's such a fucking amazing documentary. But yeah, thank you guys. Mat <laughs> Atia Marzen, he's, he's following me, he follows me on YouTube. He's been a long time sub, Atia Marzen has. I have some interactions with him on Twitter, but yeah, I know Atia, man. Atia's my boy. Atia Marzen, greatness. Slave your life away for crumb of concrete jungle. Zukan just thinking in it, dudes, and rock back and forth. I'll be thinking in it, dudes. All, all he's thinking about 20, I hate to say this, all he's thinking about 24-7 is like One Piece. Man, what One Piece, dudes? I'm freaking in it, dudes. Kierka Island, wherever you get me, yo. I can't be that guy, I need to be stimulated by different things, fam. Dwagon? I wonder what Dwagon's gear, f gear 6, dudes. Gear 6, gear 24-7, gear 6, dudes, gear 7, dudes. Can't be that guy, I can't get stimulated by that shit. Everyone will be watching, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, I'm gonna end it here. Peace out, guys. From what I gathered, you grew up nice and sheltered with mama's pretty stories and your own made up fury. And mama gave me a magic clicker. Well, yes, I think it's true and fair to say.
all your stories of crime and chilling thrillers of hard-boiled killers became bestsellers. It was all too much I had to get on.